How's it going, everybody? We are back. It's been how many years since we did a proper mastermind stream? Back in like 2021, we used to do quite regular mastermind podcasts. We didn't get too many episodes in, but it was it was fun. Definitely fun. We talked about a lot of interesting things and, you know, time for the reboot. So here on stream today, we have Jordan TV, D Yum Yum, the cheese Ma Manos money god. We got Agent Russ and myself, Pansy. This is the first time in forever since that all of us played the game at the same time. Not only that, Russ came over to NA and we are all in the same region, same guild. Well, me, I hopped off for some PvE shenanigans, PvP shenanigans, but yo, same thing. How's it going, everybody? Jordan, D, Russ, welcome. Masterminds podcast. Uh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> These guys just <laughs> chilling. Hits me with the ooh, ooh. God damn. Yeah, well what's going on everybody how you doing good stuff good stuff how about we uh go around the go around the table here jordan i think uh your return has been quite successful you've been gone for how long and you've been already back into the grind of things now right how's everything going for you good um yeah i quit the game like what probably almost two years ago and yeah. uh my storage values of all my stuff like coming back were ridiculous <laughs> so i liquidated a bunch of stuff and yeah basically got all my gear back dude we uh, always used to think about how much money you had in your alchemy storage because before you left you had like an over 100 bills alchemy storage something something crazy saved up and since then alchemy prizes over the past couple years have gone up significantly how much money do you make out of he that ha he had that when when the hourly was 300 mil an hour. So it was harder <laughs> to get the 100 mil in the storage too. Yeah, absolutely. I want to know the number. How much approximate, Jordan, how much money do you make? Um, so my, I had like, I think I had like 100 bill in Alcmats and then I had, oh wait, shit. Did my thing go out? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You said you had 100, 100 bill in Alcmats <laughs> and then you cut out. Yeah, it ended up being something like five to like 600 bill total in Alcmats. Jesus, this guy. Just free money <laughs> from them making Alchemy better. Yeah, how many times did they buff Alchemy? You, you melted yeah. all those to get your Ted Monos, right? Because uh, when you left, you didn't have the Ted Monos. Right, yeah, I only had uh, my Pen Manos accessory. That was it. Right, one of the last things he last did was roulette for grade. that. <laughs> It wasn't a rage quit. It wasn't a rage quit, but you you got a pen manos out of that roulette. So good for you, man. <laughs> boosted. Boosted. One out of six. <laughs> One out of six. Struggle win. Oh man. Don't even get me started. Oh, but good stuff. D, how how are things going for you? Penjeranoa grind complete? Uh yes, sir. Just finished my last Penjeranoa accessory today. Nice. My baby, baby proofing the account so I can never fall below endgame masteries and then uh, just go for these paperweight pen manos accessories again. <laughs> In before they buff the prices of pen Jeranoa. <laughs> tap the tap god. No. Nah. Well, they can't, they, they don't really have too much room to bump it. It's, yeah, it's they 10 don't. bill, average is like 35. What are they going to put? Push it up to 15, 20? It doesn't make <laughs> it any better to sell, you know? Yeah, I think well, 30, 30 is a decent price for that. If they yeah. increase up yeah. to like 30, 40, people can actually upgrade for profit. If yeah, they want yeah, to. yeah, that's true. But will they? <laughs> it doesn't use crown stones or anything like that, so probably no. not. No benefit yeah, when for it them. When comes to PA, one thing I notice is like they just want to. Uh, they just want you to do everything. Like look, look at for example, like the cooking utensils, right? The mats to uh, craft a cooking utensil right now is like over 4 million, like maybe 5 million, close to 5 million. And the sale price for it is like 2.5. So there's no way you can make profit out of it. So they, they just literally just want everyone to craft their own utensils. It used to be profitable back when it was like 1 mil each, right? And then they yeah, increased the... Uh, be... What did they do first? They increased the price of rough stone, was it? I, uh, yeah, I, yeah, they yeah, they increased the recently increased the class when, of, when uh, you uh, rock stones. Yeah. They're all profit still, but they're just not worth it. At least not the normal utensils. The advanced, if you account for CP usage, 
versus like node money, mm. then it's not worth it. Yeah. Like for sale, yeah, it's not worth when, it. Previously, when I started, like um, with one million, if you sell it for one million, you could still get like three hundred sixty k profit per utensil, and I was making yeah. good money back then because the rough stones was like three k and logs mm -hmm. was like pretty much a similar. So there is no way you could make money uh, selling those mats. But since uh, mats are higher now, which is like almost their true value, mm -hmm. and but uh, and the nodes are better. Are not, yeah, nodes are better now with the mini games as well. Yeah. 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 It's just for self use. Mo mostly, it's all all it's left for is self use. Like. Yeah. So what do you guys think about the mini games, though? Uh, honestly, I Amazing. haven't been I haven't been able to experience it, but. I was surprised when they added those in. <laughs> I think the idea of minigame is good, but it's not fair on everyone. Because, like, you know, we, we have, I'm sure we have, like, uh, people, like, who has, like, special needs or, you know, like, some other, uh, you know, like, handicap problems they have. Like, they, it's not fair on them to <laughs> play uh, <laughs> those mini games and... You know, like for myself, like when, really? when you do harvesting mini game, right? I can't memorize a thing. You know, I have to take a picture, <laughs> and then uh, you know. Well, there you the go. You can game. take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> so I can consider myself like a handicap when I when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to harvesting mini game. Oh and no. I, I guess because I only did like ten minutes. Maybe if I practice, I'll, I might get better at it. But. Also, like that uh, six uh, six billion worth of Jensen, they locked it behind minigame, and I think that's not fair. Like it should it should be global drop for like every type of gathering, not just minigame. Mm. Maybe an equivalent of it. Uh, minigames are the yeah. best thing they've ever done to life skilling. Period. That's how I feel about but it. The idea idea is good. If it was a bit more easier, like a uh, mining one, uh, that would be good. <laughs> I would like that. There needs to be a little bit of challenge, <laughs> man. On. Come on. <laughs> and it's not even that hard. You just need to go practice. You, you got this. I believe in your us. Yeah. Uh, so I'll get uh, Jordan to teach me to perfect <laughs> my harvesting. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I think that's a good segue into what we wanted to talk about. So we got two main topics planned out today. And D, I'm going to hand it off to you first here. Um, oh, but for first thing here, recently, Land of Morning Light, a lot of content updates over the past uh, several months and stuff. But markets took a hit. The game is in a different state than it was before. I just wanted to, you know, take a chance here for us to uh, talk about how the game has changed and what the current state of life skilling looks like. And D, I know you've been pretty passionate about it on your streams and stuff. You have a lot to say. I'll let you kick things off with this uh state of life skin like marketing like prices of stuff everything like after they added land of morning light we got a lot of new content for life skill after those mini games and just the state of the life skills in general they've changed since what all that content dropped right i mean it's the the mini games changed life skilling forever it's such an amazing change you get access to every recipe in the game that you want as long as you go work for it basically right yeah, absolutely. Can you ex uh, expand on that for someone who's not familiar with uh, mini games? So it's just a little game that pops up every uh, so often when you gather, if you've done the quest line, and then it speeds up the process at which you can acquire materials, and then therefore gives you more AFK time behind the utensil to you know craft a recipe of your choosing that you've gathered for. Mm. So yeah. as a grinder, for example, somebody who's never life skilled, a, a grinder basically. Uh, is going to come in and he's going to be able to go gather for all his grind elixirs, you know, without any issues, just about other than traces. Like, traces is like the one true last bottleneck left in marketing life skilling, basically, because everything else you can go gather. Right. And do you think that's a, that's a, they should keep it like that, where traces are still bottlenecked? Yeah, I think, I think you need one. Uh, bottleneck to make it. it good that's why cooking is not really good right now because there is no bottleneck not like, anymore <laughs> e everything is available literally everything so if everyone can buy to everything to make it when it used to be good when meat wasn't uh available right. 
Right. Mm. Well, that, well, then that's the one bottleneck, right? So now that there's no bottlenecks, everyone can do it. So it's going to be way more competitive. Even way snake more meat listings, has fallen. <laughs> way more listings. And then, you know, there are people that value their time lower. Like just because something is min max 700 mil an hour, there's going to be people who sell their product for 400 mil an hour. It doesn't matter to them, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Jordan, you've been uh, making good use of that mini game. How, how's your gathering going? Power leveling gathering. Good. Uh, yeah. So with the mini game now, underwater is probably the best XP you can make in an hour. <laughs> um, and the positive thing about it is that you can do it forever. So like, there is no energy problem like bear, mm. for example. Right. Uh, but the only problem is, right, you have to go to the ocean, you got to go look for, you know, you have to put in the work to go look for this uh, underwater gathering XP, uh, but it's ridiculous. Um, Fair trade off. Yeah. Now diving, diving sets are back in the, into the forefront. <laughs> well, that's not the only power level spot. Let's, True. Just, th let's just throw in a little mention at Cheese Manus Money River here. <laughs> And I know seed power leveling. I think you are the only one lucky with that seed. I I try like over like almost two thousand energy there, and I didn't proc a single one. I don't know. I have several people telling me they're getting fifty percent an hour. So I mean, I trust the no, masses. That's pretty good for them, I guess. Yeah, I trust the masses. I think underwater, underwater is uh, sounds pretty good. When we got the first ferry, and I remember I proc like uh, plus thirty the bread and i was like so excited i'm like oh one day underwater gather is gonna be a uh, good again and then i'll i'll utilize this you know i'll take advantage of this and i've been waiting for that for like three <laughs> years and finally it's out and i quit mina and my new fairy if you have a look it it doesn't have the bread like it has every other skill just not the bread like so i'm like yeah oh. i rerolled that as well <laughs> years ago though years ago but yeah, I mean, it's definitely good that they added a bit of variety. I mean, it, gathering has always been pretty monotonous. You just run your circle, gather your it felt items. like a job. It felt like a job. Absolutely. It felt like a job so bad. And now with minigames, it doesn't feel that bad. Now you look forward to playing the minigame and winning so that you can see what loot you 10 x Yeah. You know, th there's like a dopamine hit in gathering. It's crazy. Exactly. Got to get that dopamine in for sure. But in terms of like what you're getting and in terms of the loot, do you think it's fair? Do you think they did a good job with it or would you yeah, change I anything? I, no, I think everything's perfect about the min gathering. They should never touch again. What about it's the perfect. other mini games? Like, uh... Uh, I have no problems with any of them. Really? Okay. I, I don't have the, the brain issue, brain lag on the <laughs> herb mini game. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, for me personally, I suck at the tanning one. Maybe okay. I haven't given it enough time or practice, but I'm just bad at it. Well, D recommended me actually to draw on the screen. <laughs> I'll get my marker and <laughs> draw on the screen when I did the herbs. Whatever helps, man. No, no, we will, we'll use an app. We'll use an app to draw on the screen, not literally draw on the screen. <laughs> so just people who are taking notes, please don't draw on your screens. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, I mean, mini games definitely a plus. Uh, I think it was one of those positive changes. Like, there's, you know, it's just a good new addition. But when we look at like Land of the Morning Light, they brought in a lot of things. We got new workers, we got new nodes, um, you know, we got crystals. How did that impact the market? Because one thing you've uh, said quite frequently, D, and it makes 100% sense, they gave us all this easy to earn mastery but they didn't increase the upper limit. How do you think uh, that's playing out right now? Do you think they should have uh, increased the upper limit? or? I mean, if you want my honest opinion, there, there is no problems in any markets except for cook markets. Like That's mm -hmm. the only market suffering as a result of everyone being caught up in mastery. Right, right. So the easiest Band-Aid fix there is you know, a one-to-one -one imperial change or even do something like incentives for being g50 only g50 cooks get one-to-one -one imperials you know then mm -hmm. there's a reason to push your cooking all the way 
and then push your CP all the way, and then also go for one to one Imperials. You know, I think it is uh, about time we see those G50 perks come in, you know? Yeah, it's like there needs enough. to be incentives for reaching these upper levels of life scaling if they're closing the gap on the mastery, right? Right. Uh, because there's really nothing else to show off. Like once once you're like G50 cooks, I'm on plenty of channels all the time. I don't even have an icon. There's like 10 G50 cooks. Yeah. <laughs> and we're all cooking the same stuff. Nobody gets anything special. Yeah. So there needs to be like a little secret or special recipe for G50s only or access to something that only G50s get so that there's a incentive for getting there and people that are there get rewarded for right. like a difference. Yeah, like for, for cooking, cooking, for example, maybe like uh, the time reduction, maybe like 0 0.5 second or something like at G50, uh, like some some kind of like huge boost. I would like yeah, to see it something like that uh, like the Imperial change would be good because it doesn't really hurt others. Like if you're going off at, I mean, cooking isn't isn't difficult to get to G50, but other life skills are more harder. So Very if you get hard. something, yeah, yeah, if you if you get something that's uh, increasing your performance like that much, I think that would that that might not be the best way to go about it. Uh, I'd like no, it'll just create the gap too big again. Yeah, I'd like to see a perk, but without hurting other players in the process. Uh, Imperials yeah, would be, be it shouldn't be mandatory to get to exactly. Yeah, uh, Imperials. I don't think they've I changed thought, really for like a while. Getting extra bullet was a good idea, mm. but it was only like at Guru one. So like you know that that should be a lot more uh, at higher levels. This man wants more bullets, huh? Just say it, Russ. A I full mean, magazine. Landing the bullets are free, <laughs> but I was I was talking about uh, uh, bullet idea on the stream yesterday. I was saying like, you know how we have like offense, right? Yeah. And with rifles, you know, we should have like a magazine and then different type of bullets, maybe in it. And then let's say you know you can craft like like silver bullets that does more damage, like wolves, you know, because they are wolves and you know they are. Uh, they need to hit by a silver bullet, and then you know maybe gold bullet is for like lions and uh, tigers uh, uh, and they stuff can't and, they can't even make know. another mount besides the horse man. Come on, <laughs> oh, I mean, semi-automatic rifles. Idea. <laughs> yeah. No, I yeah, hear you though. You I can, hear you. You can have like you know bullets that you know does you know let's say you have a magazine full of like fire bullets that's more damage, but then you have magazine full of like uh, ice bullets that's you know. Uh, slows the target or something, you know. Like, <laughs> you can expand the ideas. You can have like different type of games for different type of mobs. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, as long as uh, it's not too much work for them, I I'm sure they'd be open to making a change like that. But you know, when it comes to these bullets and stuff, like if you had to craft your own bullets, then that would just be, you know, inconvenience, wouldn't it? Like if people felt, oh, now we you, have to you, get you these. You just buy it from the pearl shop, right? Let's give the pearl shop ideas so they can implement. Don't something. give them more ideas, man. We're walk. We're trying to move away from it. <laughs> oh, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, but staying on the topic real quick. Yeah. I, again, I don't see unless anybody else sees something. I don't see any other markets suffering besides cooking. Anybody else see any other markets that suffer? I think that's uh, like cooking has been suffering um, quite a long time and. You know, even though we still, but that's make normal, this isn't it? Like, wasn't that always the the number one thing? Like, everyone was told forever, basically, right? Mm -hmm. Cooking is the best life skill, so everybody's funneled into cooking. But is it wasn't that inevitable yeah. anyway? With all, the, well, with everyone cooking, wasn't it just always going to be flooded mm -hmm. and lower price, lower profit? If more people are doing it for, uh, depend depends on the demand. Like, you know, right now we don't have much demand uh, for cooking purchases other than like imperial and there was there used to be a time you know bartering was popular and people used to buy uh food for fuel their ships and stuff once bartering is like you know decline a little bit so we lost uh, a good chunk of like customer base there i would say and so and imperial like in the past like grinder uh, used to make like 100 200 or 300 million per hour or something and so getting extra like 100 150 from imperial was a good money for like 10 minutes of worth of time but right now grinders doing like 1 billion 2 billion an hour and you know like they can't be bothered uh, buying the meal boxing it up just for the like 100 million they, right. they can just do 100 million in like 5 10 minutes 
So they have K though. We we lost a big big of uh, customer from there as well. So if they do increase the amount we can deliver, like let's say one to one, and maybe like increase the profit per day, let's say 500, 600, then most of the grinders will end up coming back and purchasing the meals for Imperial deliveries. Or, or they could do infinite Imperials <laughs> and then everyone's forced to cook their own stuff and gather for their own stuff. Because the way it is now is that grinders can infinitely grind, right? As long as you have physical strength in your body, you can grind and then you get a vendor to sell your trash loot to. But life skillers, you can, you can gather cook, you know, 10 hours a day for a week, but you rely on the market. Now, what if we could just so, pack everything that we've gathered cooked and hand it in? You would never have to deal with the market. Yeah, but then that defeats the purpose of like MMORPG. You know, we, we, we're going to be less interacting with other people. <laughs> it's just going to turn into like a solo game. So I, I know, I, I don't know. Think they will Infinity's be, a stretch. They will Infinity's a stretch. Yeah. But one to one is obviously yeah. the needed change and a buff to the money yeah. itself. Before before they made changes to Cron Meal, I had an idea of like uh, even when Enli was in my chat, uh, I was talking like saying, um, you know, there should be like a, a cooldown reduced for normal meals. Like you know, right now when you pop a meal, you have to wait thirty minutes. I say like you know that should reduce to ten second, and you can pop up like maximum five meals. And obviously the meals recipes is gonna change, and so like it depends on the spot you grind. You can uh, you know use the your ferry for continuous care pop like five meals at the time to combination of meals and if you want to easy you can still use use like a cron meal or something but uh, depends on the spot like you should be able to pop like five meal at a time food like right rotations away. yeah food, food rotation and it's gonna like over override like and with the cron meal and then at, at that time i remember and i was saying like you know but it might confuse with like the with like you know how we improve our level health level i said you know you can always get a you know like a cool down for it like you know you can pop the meal and there's gonna be a cool down that you can't you know level your health for 30 minutes and after like a few months they implement that to cron meal but they haven't implemented to the normal meal so if they implement that to normal meals like you know i'm sure like most of the grind spots like if you can pop up like five elixirs and five um you know special meals and you can i'm sure you can come up with like some some good like type of buffs that uh you know is going to benefit from one spot uh, versus the another spot yeah one thing is yeah like... but that, that might have a negative impact on imperials wouldn't it they need to decide like uh... if they're doing an imperial sink then meals stay popular otherwise food rotation then imperials suffer no it's gonna it's gonna be popular because people are going to use more food because they can there's a 10 minutes cooldown and they are just going to pop like five meals at one go and then you know meal cooldowns can be like you know lower to like 60 minutes or something because you know there's no reason to have like a meal <clears throat> like you know two hours three hours if if your continuous care is uh using it you can have meals like 30 minutes 40 minutes or you know 60 minutes or like you know even two hours like it's fine, but yeah, normally meals should uh, last a lot quicker. Like it should go a lot quicker, but that shouldn't be any cooldown. You know, if you if you want to pop like five meals at a time, you can just pop all five at the same time. Uh, speaking of buffs, PA, when are you guys uh, going to implement a buff bar toggle so I can save my buffs and swap to grinding when I choose to on the same character <laughs> instead of instead of popping a villa buff for two hours and then oh shit, I got to go grind, but my villa buff I'm going to waste an hour of it. You know. Too much engine change, I think. Uh, uh, the technology is not here yet. So it was... I don't think it'll ever be there. But one thing uh, I wanted to point out is I, I'm not a fan of when they oversimplify things. Like once upon a time back in the day, starting our buffer, our food rotation and everything, that was a part of the game. That was a part of, you know, utilizing the game's mechanics. But then cron meals come out and then it just oversimplifies it. You just press that one meal. I kind of miss like having that extra, you know, layer of complexity. Not to mention they keep the markets normalized and downwards because they hand them out in boxes that everyone <laughs> yeah. lists one, two units, one, two units, undercutting by default, yeah. keeping the price normalized nice and low. Yeah. So the true potential of these meals haven't even been seen because they just hand it out. I think 
food rotation was annoying uh, at a time uh, because, you know, by the time you pop your last food, it's like almost two hours already to get the perfect food rotation. And that was like the annoying part. So if they reduce the cooldown like to 10 yeah. seconds and you can just pop like three, four, five meals at one go, you know, people don't have to wake up like two hours before Siege <laughs> and start running their food rotation. It was it was very tedious, it was. in my opinion. It was, but it added an extra layer of, you know, complexity. So, you know, it wasn't perfect, but with some tweaks, I think it could, they could probably bring it back. Jordan, you've been quiet. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I was, I was going to say, like, where's our, our man, <laughs> Uwu? <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, the cook market's the only thing that's suffering, yeah. really. Um, gathering's good. Like, basically what I did was, you know, BDOlytics. I took all beginner life skill, like, Logia gear, and I looked at all the life skills, and, like, gathering's fine, alchemy's fine, processing's fine. But then you look at cooking, and it's, like, not even 100 mil an hour. It's, like, <laughs> no one's going to want to get into it, so... I feel like some kind of change is going to come to cooking soon within like a year or so, whether it's one, one Imperial, maybe that'll bring everything up to where cooking's good. Um, I think hunting is like ridiculous right now out of all the life skills. Cyber hunting. Uh, it makes sense. It's active. Yeah. Um, but it's like, yeah, like, I don't know. What do you Sniper think, Ross? Hunting did nerf the normal hunting a little bit, but um, you know, I think like right now, when once people started doing sniper hunting, for example, like Wolf Blood uh, price increased from like two k all the way almost like seven k, and so that sort of balanced out a little bit the money you lost from the meat, but mm -hmm. it's not still not quite there. So yeah. I guess once. Uh, the crystals uh, doesn't make as much money right now. They'll probably you know, buff the Imperials still... at that point. <laughs> yeah, most crystals drops uh, uh, sells around 400, 500 million. And, you know, it might take like 150, 200 million to craft it. And you still make like 200 or 300, uh, between 200, 300 uh, per crystal drop. And if the cost of making those crystal increase or the sale price decrease, and let's say you end up making like 100 million uh, per crystal, then people might slowly go back to Narcion hunting, and then that might increase the meat prices a little bit, maybe like to 15, 16K. Yeah. But at the end, I think the hunting is uh, in a pretty good spot. Like if you have like 1K hunting mastery, you, you, you will be making very good money for the gear you have. Like right now I have like a full try, uh, mono set and I'm like G32 and with like uh, all the buffs and stuff like 1650 mastery I, I made like close to 25 to 30 K meat per hour yesterday so you, we get quite decent amount of meat like if, if you can actually perfect the sniping like if you are not good with the reload times and stuff yeah, it's a bit challenging but if you can perfect the like reload times and um, you know also one tip like for people who are doing hunting like um Make sure, like, when you kill the mobs, like, the pigs disappear a lot slower than uh, bears. Like, pigs takes about three minutes uh, to disappear, and the bears disappear about, like, one and a half minute. So, if you are, like, killing just pigs, like, I tested yesterday, I can kill, like, up to 10, maybe 10, even 11 pig, uh, pretty much clear the whole map before I can start looting. But if you are going to kill the bear, make sure you kill, like, four or five pigs before starting killing bear and then by the time you gather so that should hopefully speed up your uh hunting uh outcome a bit so yeah, good yeah i think hunting is pretty good yeah you can make up to like a billion depends on the your gear gathering is pretty good as well uh with mini games and the only thing is uh you know jordan and they said uh life skill why is the cooking is the only thing is suffering right now well at least but, for marketing uh, it's, yeah. it's not yeah for like for imperials and stuff uh slightly uh but still it's not it's not bad like compared to what it was like two years ago i think we still make about the same money it just hasn't been buffed that's what i should say like because everything else buffed like hunting got buffed grinding got buffed and cooking pretty much got uh 
around the same money. That's why people think like you know cooking is not making much uh, making much money, but it, it's pretty much making the same money what it used to be in the past. I think it will uh, trend back up. I think we're seeing in some of the uh, markets that prices did start picking back for up. NA. We should we should specify this for NA. No one else it's matters. Not, <laughs> it's, gonna, it's not going to be true everywhere. <laughs> EU is an anomaly. You know, yeah, gonna, they, they have a lot more life skills. They have very competitive markets on EU. Absolutely. But on NA... And also time zone, yeah. I believe. Maybe like a lot more people in EU play from different time zones. And so the market, in my opinion, is quite active. But when I check the NA market, NA market like goes up and down during the day. And that's probably like majority of people actually play in NA from NA. Like around the same say the same time. Prime zone. time. Prime time. But in EU. Yeah, prime time. Like there's a prime time for uh NA, but I'm not sure if there's actually prime time for EU for marketplace. Uh people can correct me on that. I think they're uh, I think they have a less spread in terms of time zones though. But I think it's just a matter of them having more life skillers in general. They've always been a bit more gung ho and uh more players skill. too. Players too, yeah, absolutely. I think they have yeah. the highest highest player base for a region. But, but let's talk about life skills that aren't doing good. Besides cooking markets, there's farming that hasn't been changed. Yep, and hey, uh, we got triple moles right now. <laughs> Trading hasn't yeah. been has, uh, the active. Let's not even mm. talk about the active. <laughs> we'll talk about the passive. I didn't the even try transportation it. of the the crates that you yeah. can make in workshops, buildings need an entire rework what we're still working on refineries from 10 years ago <laughs> uh what yep. else can be changed uh i mean training's not bad anymore training's with the crystals and stuff like the xp climbing and training is a little bit better uh they did change the active part to be much easier too and with the 30 minute respawns it's even better with five minute channel swaps it's even better they buffed so the training, horse tiers yeah yeah, training's not so not in a bad place anymore. I feel like uh, fishing, yep. farming, and trading, big offenders. Sailing, big offender. They need to bring back active fishing, like hot spots and stuff, and make it actually worth it. Once upon yeah, a like, time, we used to go out in a fishing boat, look for a hot spot. We saw those birds circling in the air and go and actually actively fish. It's not one of those I think things that we start that. Yeah. I was going to add, like, uh, for EU, I noticed, like, uh, it takes uh, extra time for their market to recover. So if, if there is, like, an event or something comes, like, it takes uh, about a week for NA market to change and adjust. And when the event comes and also when the event disappear, but for EU, it's, it's, like, pretty much two weeks or maybe almost three weeks to market to change or recover. Yeah, that's one thing to know. So they, that's a bit slower than um, NA in terms of, uh, you know, market changes. So if people like, you know, buying things or reselling, you know, as marketplace PVP, I would say, um, you can use NA as a base and uh, adjust your market for some items. And you can probably actually uh, make more profit in a year just watching the NA market. Yeah. Now, uh, yeah, go, was, all right, back to the topic of go uh, ahead, the, Jordan. Uh, life skills. <laughs> uh, I also think bartering should have got buffed a little bit more than what it did. Yeah. Because 7.5 mil, it's like... <laughs> should've should've it. At, they should have Yeah, they should have at least doubled it, maybe even tripled it, because then you would get a lot more people wanting to barter, which then would bring up a lot of materials off the market. I mean, they could so. probably start with not gating the boat progression behind like 80 days of ocean content. <laughs> that if you, God forbid, you miss a group sailies, like you're on your own. You're on your own. And you can't get a group for sailies or a guild to do sailies. Like you are on your own, buddy. And it's like a loss to even go for the blue correct gear once you do get the boat. Like going and grinding salties and popping loot. What they need and everything. to do is create a market for the boat for the Carax, make them sellable, make them so that you can craft it at a, a workshop, just like the frigates and the sailboats. Mm -hmm. Make it so people that like to do the ocean content can farm these materials and then sell the boats, and people who want to get into it can then just pay the price. I wouldn't be opposed the, to that. I always yeah. say that. I always say that. Don't look things behind dailies that's how i hate dailies. 
<laughs> yeah, like I haven't had to, I haven't had the chance to finish my boat in like two years now because I just can't be bothered to get a group number one. And when I did have the motivation to get a group, like I missed a couple of days, and you know that's it. <laughs> you get no boat progression once you miss the sallies. That's it. Yeah. I Unless mean, you in... go through the grueling 10 hours a day on the ocean and you just sit on the ocean and barter real slow on the slow boat <laughs> going for these materials that, you know, make your boat. You're living the whole ocean life at that point. They did. A, there was a point when we didn't have the material refresh, but still the da- the daily is not a fan. And the money per hour, the money per day, we should say, because bartering, it doesn't go per hour basis. It's one thing I was talking about earlier on my stream that the philosophy PA has, it's not aligned with what we're thinking bartering should be. We think, you know, if someone wants to be a barter, that should be their main source of income if they want to put in the effort. PA, they're thinking it's a side activity. It's a side right, hustle. Right, right. A little bit of money, just, a, you know, one bill maybe. It's a restriction. It's, it it's not a sandbox experience. It's a restriction. It's just like farming in this game. Farming is restricted. They only want you to have 10 farms at the cost of 100 CP. Mm-hmm. And if you want more, you can't. Because they don't want you to do, you, they don't want you to be, you know, a farmer full time. Dude, Arcage uh, used to let you be a farmer full time. Like even if you had just full time, <laughs> even if you had just one plot of land, you could, you could literally, full time. Yeah, yeah, you could plant something and it grows in three minutes. By the time you're done planting a hundred things in that tiny plot, it's tedious to click, but you used to make money. Like Ex- exactly, it's sandbox experience, not exactly, for BDL. Yeah. Like they restrict it. They restrict what they want you to do, and they, then all roads lead to. Crons, cron clicking. Yeah, they give you enough freedom in this game. They shouldn't like. Yeah, go ahead. They clearly say they don't want people to spend all their time on on sea. They want people to enjoy the rest of the content. Pirate life. Leave us alone. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Well, that that's what they say. Like I know. Yeah, but that that that, that's contradictory. At least I don't know if they've officially said they're sandbox MMO, but you know that's what I've always heard about BDL that it's a sandbox game. But it definitely it doesn't feel like game, that. Yeah. It doesn't well, feel like yeah. that. Not only that, it's not aligned with their overall philosophy, but the game. They don't force you to go down a certain path. You can do whatever you want. Let us do whatever sure we want you. here. <laughs> yeah, they sure restrict you whatever path you go down, though. Unless it's clicking for with crons. That's unlimited. I mean, it used to be worse. We couldn't even buy stuff at one point. But oh, yeah. By the way, Pansy, uh, as we go... Uh, you know, this is going to be a bit long stream. And I'm sure like we normally take the questions from chat at the end of the stream, but since it's going to be long stream and four people and we are jumping from topic to topic, maybe uh, go with the chat as well. Like if people have like, you know, uh, have yeah. an idea or, you know, steer the conversation, you know, just uh, you can, uh, as a moderator, you can ask questions from chat. Wait, and Wait, Kaywin says, Kaywin, I agree with you in chat. Kaywin says, uh, it is 100% a sandbox. You are not restricted to any one activity. I agree. But then if you want to full-time set activity, you can't, right? Like they, they impose restrictions like, yeah, you can try it out. You can do it a little bit. You can even do it for an hour. But after that, you know, you can't, what are you going to just stand around there on your farms? You know what I mean? Like you have to wait for it to, get infected or wait for it to finish growing. But what if I had 500 CP worth of farms? I could literally run back and forth between all my fences, play the farmer life. You know, I could be that supplier of onions and peppers to the market if I wanted to be. And there are a pretty large variety of seeds. I had so much crazy ideas for farming, but if we start talking about it, it's probably going to take three (laughs) hours for me to explain all the farming content. But yeah, one day, uh, I guess I'll start talking about that. But yeah, there are so many improvements can be done in terms of farming and farming can pretty much become like its own standalone game in this game. Like uh, the base for this game, like everything is perfect. Like, you know, we have a good engine, uh, you know, all the base that you need on an MMORPG is there. It's just like, you know, just need polishing and, you know, get, getting rid of the unnecessary, unused, old school stuff as well. Like there are some stuff in this game. We always say like 90% of the stuff is like unusable or unprof- uh, profitable. Like, Outdated you know, and you stuff. You look at the, yeah. all the crafting. Yeah, all the crafting like houses, like, you know, someone who crafts like as well sword. Like why? <laughs> yeah, the, the, the buildings are super outdated. They, yeah. they needed a full overall on the buildings. Didn't, yeah. didn't they say they were working on that or no? 
no, they never mentioned anything. I would have I would have caught wind of that for sure. It's like the number one thing I cry about in video. Yeah. Hey, we'll get it by 2025. But yeah, Russ, um, I'll let you keep an eye on the chat and just call it out whenever there's a question uh, you want to address because I don't have the chat open. I got OBS recording in my game. Let's talk about real okay. quick the LOML as a as a it's LISCO region. <laughs> Besides snipering, there was not much to gather there really. It was yeah, it's like, just nodes and sniper. <laughs> there's like three gather spots that are worth mentioning. There's the dead tree essence spot. Yeah. There's uh, the flower spot for spirit perfumes. Mm -hmm. um, what else? There's I guess stuff for the new meals. Goosefoot. There's a goosefoot rotation. But overall, it felt kind of empty. You know, like it was just like. A lot of scenic stuff, but I don't know, not a lot of interacting. Yeah, I think they could have added a lot more gathering spots and hunting. It was just... I, there should have been trees and herbs everywhere that you could gather, but it's yeah. just like non-interactable stuff. It just looks pretty. Yeah, and also, one of the big things that came were the crystals, the mastery crystals. I felt the implementation of it wasn't you know, up to the mark. I think they should have done more with it. It should have been like you're utilizing... Um, the housing or the building system with you know workshops and stuff to make certain mats, consume items off the marketplace, consume items that you can gather, and they should have made added a bit more complexity with it because it's just you know you get the drop, you make it into a crystal, then you sell it. I think it should have been like a progressive upgrade system. I mean, not an upgrade system, but a progressive system where you know for each one you make, it'll cost a little bit more. Uh, mats and stuff and they'd be able to consume a lot more material than the way it's doing right now and it's pretty simple you just go and buy the mats and or the, buy the crystals and then what you got your mastery you can put in no effort and you can get it they could have done a little bit more with it because it's the first time they added mastery or life skilling to a crystal other than the meme xp i think uh it was a bit lackluster in my opinion also uh gem slots there's not enough like <laughs> sandbox uh, game you only get 100 <laughs> crystals pick and choose what you want to do <laughs> pay us money <laughs> what, Wait, what what did you, you think you can still pay to win in my opinion you know all you have to do is just buy extraction you know tools all the time from <laughs> pearl shop and keep extracting every time you need to gather put another 10 <laughs> maybe that's what they I want i mean you can just keep up extraction tools yeah yeah i mean even the expansion isn't enough right uh, what were you talking about, Jordan? What I think about uh, uh, the boss splits. Like, how do you like it? Um, the boss do you do it a bad. lot? I do it every week. Um, good rewards. I mean, it doesn't take long. And right now, I'm still getting rewards from the journals. So, you know, it's free rewards, but I haven't gotten anything good from it, like any significant drop. I might have got one meme crystal, but the overall encounters pretty good i think uh they have the right idea but they're quite janky like weird things happen which i'm like how did i die why do you suddenly jump on me all the way over here how do he hit me like it's a bit clunky i think over time they can refine it they they're on the right path though i think uh it, it was a good bit of content to add to bdo yeah, I I think they should add like two player mode or three player mode or something and like come out with even more different bosses. Yeah, I think that would be fun. Honestly, I have an idea for them in terms of utilizing guilds better, like guild raids. Uh, I'd like to see like a 10 man, 20 man, 50 man raid with actual difficulty planning compositions and actually good rewards coming out of it. Like I got a full idea, a list of idea. We'll save that for another another episode but that sounds pretty dope yeah i it's think like, it's like a wow raid almost like a boss fight like a real boss fight yeah it should be a real boss fight it doesn't have to like take out from wow or anything they can do their own thing in terms of mechanics they come up with a lot of uh, unique mechanics to bdo in these boss splits so they are capable of it that much i i can say but you know it's just a matter of them implementing it and it, i felt like guild content is a bit lacking they do have guild encounters but it could certainly be better. It could be like a major event that you look forward to with your guild every week. And if you add the right amount of difficulty to it I, and the right amount of reward, I think it'd be cool. But yeah, I think uh, the boss splits was good, but could be better in terms of the performance of it. Just a little bit janky here and there. But over time, I'm pretty confident that they will resolve those issues. And I haven't then... done any bosses. 
since I just recently got back to game? Um, definitely do, because uh, they're so yeah, they're easy. Fun. They're fun. Yeah. Even if you just do calamity ones, the easiest levels, like it's enjoyable for. The, I mean, you know, one or two minutes here there. At least go for the journals and stuff because you get a lot of stamina. I think over 200, 250 stamina or something. Yeah, I think 300. Yeah, I haven't done the journals yet. Yeah, since I got back, like I've been back for a few days because I took yeah. like uh, three months break. And yeah, since then, there's a lot to catch up, you know. And anyone who hasn't... Save money for certain things. Yeah, and anyone who hasn't done it, you get 20 accuracy from doing the easy journal. So it's really easy to get. And I think you just have to do a Calamity 2, any boss, Calamity 4, any boss. And those are really easy to do for most of them. So that's free 20 accuracy. That's a huge amount. It made a world of difference for me at Hex. So definitely get that are, done. Are they gear-based, like the bosses? No. Like people, like, let's it's say normalized. It's gear compared to 700. It's normalized. It's your gear. Yeah, it's, it's a very... It, it's not a very noticeable one. Like, uh, as long as you have the... Um, uh, orbs that you get from doing the main story quest line and the uh, two quests from the black spirit you spec it into the boss you want to fight so if you want to uh, fight an earth boss you spec all your orbs into the earth one and yeah that that that'll di dictate the power for the most part so even if you're just full pentavala you get, you still have a pretty good chance and as long as you can survive the hits then you can just outplay it and that's where skill would come in uh, Alex in chat says, thoughts on reworking a li life skill gear, making it similar to combat gear, like allowing safer progression up to mastery letter. So basically, I think what he's trying to say is like crons and no backwards progression, like blowing gear up. Like if you go for, t uh, you know, try tap manos, it doesn't yeah. disappear. Uh, yeah. I think I, unless th they come out and tell us flat out that that's what the levels do. I think it's already set up that way. As you do life skilling more, you basically need less gear. The way it is now, that's how it is. And there is also that uh, hidden gear in the files that you showed. Uh, D, what is it? The artisan? Uh, yeah, the artisan uh, accessories that they secretly introduce into the game files that are just like Manos. <laughs> Maybe yep. maybe it's Shatina gear. Maybe they're thinking about it. You know, not everything that's in the files actually makes it to the game. Right. There's plenty of things that have been in the files for years that haven't yet made it to the game. Yeah. But hopefully, hopefully, I mean, it makes it, they should. Uh, look, combat players get full pen boss armor guaranteed through Jatina. Why can't life skillers get a full wheel of accessories? You know. Yeah, I is it mean, too much. Is it uh, like maybe they think it's too much, so they give us one Floramos? I mean, I always thought they should give some sort of life skill, put some sort of life skill gear in season, like at least a duo Manos equivalent. I think that would have been fair enough to get your XP rolling, you know, with XP buffs, the passive buffs you get from that. Because life, life XP isn't as easy to come by as combat. <laughs> I mean, they've been doing events for the last they've, year, they've, they've been going crazy with the events, literally but... pumping these XP events. I mean, that's for combat as well. But if you take the XP events out, like in terms of the number of yeah, but, buffs. But for combat, like car uh, co gear, I mean, player level in combat isn't as important as the gear that you're wearing. It's not anymore, but, no. But for life be skillers, once, yeah. before, you know, the levels are natural mastery. So EXP events diminish all the time that somebody spent hardcore leveling, you know? Yeah. It's a catch-up mechanic. That's yep, that's yep. what EXP events are. They're catch-up mechanics. Yeah, but I I still think they could have like added at least something into seasonal. We thought they were going to do that at one point, and all they did was do the buff to gathering on a seasonal character on a seasonal server. I think they doubled your loot. That's it. Yeah, the loot. Yeah, I was a bit disappointed because they did take a bit of a break between seasons. Normally, a new season would come out pretty quickly. But for that one, they took like a month, <laughs> a month and a half or something. I'm like, oh, something might be coming. It's like, hey, double loot. I'm like, shit. Yeah, yeah. Raven mentioned Trent's tier from the season. That was a good addition. For yeah. The that was a good. That was actually one of the best life stones they've added. Yeah. I mean, that's one of those things that you can't, you know, you can't eat away, right? <laughs> it's a, a baseline, as you would say, D. But I mean, uh, yeah, I think uh, they need to make a more clear more safe life skill progression path mm -hmm. for gearing because it's just too easy to click stuff 
especially when you don't need stacks and all you need is like what five concentrated max yeah to make a click happen you know and then that's it if it if you fail poof yeah yeah also I, I, what, do you, what do you guys think okay i'll let jordan speak first i was just gonna say i don't really like the the mastery crystals that they added because yeah. it kind of destroyed pen mana's accessories it's like <laughs> what is the point now of those those accessories there's no point um so they need to either raise the mastery of like life skills to make pen manas like desirable um i know i heard i heard in someone else's stream them talking about grind gear how grind gear also is kind of like in a similar situation where you don't need a certain amount of ap at a certain point or something so yeah, it kind of makes great it for specialized stats basically yeah so they need to like, in my opinion, they need to raise the mastery or do something to make it make it to where people actually want to go for pen manos accessories. I think the PVE gear yeah, though, guess... it's in a good state because when it comes to that point, it's hard cap that isn't actually necessary. But getting to the point where you can actually do all the grind spots almost, you know, everyone can actually get there without having to go like full pen black star and stuff. So you're not you don't need those hundred bill plus items to be able to get to the point where you can enter those grind spots. So I think it's actually in a good spot there for them. I Go ahead, Russ. My mina account is pretty much a good example since I have like full pen monos. Like my gathering probably like two thousand five hundred or something. Like extra five hundred master is just <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> useless. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it makes sense for uh, newer players like. You know, like for people who play casually, like they can easily reach to like 2K, um, you know, in any, I mean, most of the life skill, whether it's cooking or uh, gathering, they can probably reach uh, 2K in the first six months or so. It depends how, yeah. how fast, uh, you know, how long they play. It's like uh, when everyone's given that opportunity to get these crystals, which aren't too difficult. I mean, over time, you can just pre-order them or you can go and hunt and try to make your own, but... I felt it was too easy for the amount of mastery they gave. Uh, like if they, what I was thinking is there was a progressive approach to it where you have to make your own crystals and each one you make of, you know, the same kind will take a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And they would consume a lot of mats from the marketplace. I think they could have added some uh, material sinks in with it and added a sense of progression where, you know, oh, that guy has 10 of this crystal. That's pog. You know, it, it Add some yeah. prestige behind it. Add some effort behind it. I think it would yeah, have been like, fair. Yeah, they've been removing a lot of that from the game. Right? I know. And I, I also, what do you guys think about uh, since crystal uh, changes and you mm. know having Garmot to add two slots? Like, is it still necessary? Like, do you guys think they need to change that completely and remove from Garmot, or if you? Use the one guard mod, it's applied to whole family. Like you get extra two slots for entire Absurd family. Absurd that Garmoth is just character based. It's so crazy. I know. Uh, I'm not they, a fan of Garmoth. They should do cons as an option, I think. They need to do something because Garmoth is like so difficult to get. Like the number of pre orders you can see compared to Vels, it's a lot more difficult because obviously you need two rather than one if you're a PvE player. And it also helps both PvE and life skillers, whereas Vels isn't really necessary for life skillers. And if you have like multiple life skill characters, let's say, you know, separate hunting character and, you know, separate uh, gathering or cooking, you know, you need one for each to get they, extra. They clearly didn't crystal. think about this. They clearly <laughs> didn't think about that. Like they, they just added stuff and were like, let, let it go, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I really hope they do something about Garmod because, you know, I thought the fix would have been having a quest line for it. But to do that crafted Garmod, it takes a lot of effort. Or, you know, just make one Garmod for a crystal slot, but it's family wide. So yeah, people yeah. don't end up buying like multiple. Yeah. And also increase the drop rate. Like, you know, there's like clear like over a thousand pre orders. And yeah. For you to get one. Your chances are one in a thousand. You know, it's it's like ridiculous, even at max price. Like Very it just doesn't make sense. Yep. And Russ, I, I'm not taking a look at chat. If there's any questions, we can take them now while D's away. Uh you can't you can't run the chat on your phone. 
Uh, I'm I'm grinding. <laughs> I'm playing the game, oh, you're man. Grinding, okay. <laughs> Can't stop, won't stop. Okay, okay. But yeah, I was recording on two of my screens, so that's taking up space. But yeah, I think uh, I think we covered a pretty good. Yeah, Kar Karanda mission. Heart is the same thing. You know, you you need it's locked behind a boss. Like you know, you have to go and you can't purchase that as well. But Khan's Another heart is only for life skillers. The... Like you know, no, Karan Karanda's heart. Oh, Karanda. Karanda. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's it's still not enough. You know, you can't use two Karanda. Like if if they say like, okay, you can use two Karanda to open two two slots yeah we'll, we'll do I'd that i'd be okay with like, that it, yeah. it should be like you know you you use it and it just disappear right yeah let's say you right click and say use this item whether it's a garmod heart or you know let's say garmod opens two slots and you use karanda to open two slots so that means if you get two karanda use the items and you get like permanent two slot crystal slot open for entire family yeah 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 like make make it a consumable item rather than you know something you have to equip on your gear. There's definitely a problem there. I mean, there's definitely definitely an issue in terms of garmots. It's always been bottlenecked for years. It's been in, like not since like 2020 that it's ever sat on the market. I think they really do need to uh, do something because it does affect life skillers as well as grinders. So, you know, maybe we should we should start dropping in suggestions. <laughs> I mean one of the best ways to do it is just make a pity system if you go to Garmoth even if it's a thousand times at least you get a pity uh, you know that you showing up matters yeah they tried I mean I guess their okay, idea that, of it was that stupid quest line behind the dailies to me to me bosses world bosses in video is not challenging and that makes they're it, not yeah you know sort of like a chore you know you can go with like level 10 character and hit once and then get a loot like it's it's just it's it's just become a daily a chore that you need to wake up a certain time you know and not everyone playing in the same time zone or work at the same time zone it's just like it's not it's not ideal system in my opinion you got to remember once like upon a time we used to have pvp at world bosses so even though there was a lack of you know mechanics you know, that did add a sense of difficulty and, you know, excitement th to it. But now it's, you know, it's safe. It's just tank and spank. There's no mechanics. You just don't stand in red. I think there should have been more mechanics and, you know, a chance of failure, which would have, you know, added a bit, an extra level of dynamic to it and just difficulty and compensate players with a good amount of gear or sorry, a good amount of reward for their efforts, right? All right, though. Any any questions in chat uh, before we? I think it's a good time for us to hop into the second thing we had planned. Russ, I need you to tell me. Okay. Uh, so Raven said the Garmod demand supply issue would be balanced if players didn't want four plus of them, and if it was just like just the two like PA intended but mm. failed to perfect. Yeah. Well, like that, this goes into the par part where they didn't think about stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like when when they bring something new, they don't like they blindly bring something good into game, but they don't adjust the rest of the things that it's affecting accordingly. And like you know, they brought the crystal setup, crystal slot, and stuff like per character, you know, crystal uh, usage. Then. You know they didn't they didn't change the guard modes. They didn't change. You know they you still need guard mode. You still need like you know tailor your costume to get the middle crystal slot. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. I think uh, you like, know you when Garmot use tailor and coupon, but it yeah. should be family wide. When Garmot came out, they there was like no use for there are very niche uses for life skill crystals right it just gave us a little bit more you know movement speed and dive time and stuff like that so it was durability. a definitely durability but it was a different time in general like i think uh they should you know in respect to what the game is now the importance of it now they need to update it so there's a question in chat about the new cooking and alchemy tools do you guys use them i haven't i haven't used any and I think Jordan was saying it's 
somewhat profitable to craft, but I don't know. Uh, so I can just answer this one. Alchemy, you definitely want the new utensils. Free AFK time. Every time you get one, it's an hour. Or, for, what is it, 45 minutes? Or an hour. It's it's up there. It's worth it for AFK time for alchemy. So make them for yourself. Never sell them. And the cooking one is the same thing. You get more AFK time, but there aren't that many recipes you can do on it in the full durability. Besides the obvious that you can already do on Supremes. So the cooking one's a little bit less useful. Mm -hmm. Just because there's just not, you can't hold as much stuff because you just cook through it so fast anyway with mass cooking. But, but Alchemy is definitely the best one. Nice. All right. Uh, now, one thing I'm going to say in yeah, regarding ahead. to like crafting, whether it's a new utensil or the old utensil, uh, as I said, you know, they changed something like, you know, like Rough Stone, for example, the price of Rough Stone. Uh, was supposed to increase uh, according to demand, and they made like 25k. You know, it can be 30k, 40k, doesn't yeah, matter yeah. if there is a demand. But what you do with rough stone, they didn't change. Like, mm -hmm. look at look at polished stone. Like, it's like 75, 80k each. Like, rough stone costs a lot more than the process version. Like polished stone. Like, why would you craft polished stone? Like, it's it's less money than you know rough stone itself. So like they did, they don't change the entire thing. They just change one thing, but yeah. they don't really uh, consider what's actually affecting. Like it's it, and yeah, the utensils. Remember, yeah. like when they first changed the price of rough stones, they didn't update the price of utensils, the utensils for a long time. Yeah, took over a year, didn't it? But yeah, they they yeah. really should make sure they look down through the full pipeline of the materials usage and update accordingly. Because that was that messed last up the market. I, last time I calculated, cost like four million to make it or something. Maybe like with new changes like log prices and stuff. Maybe it's like five million to make it. So it's like double the price. Yeah. And like you know, there are there are like <clears throat> other things in game that uh, <clears throat> cost a lot more to make. Like since the beginning of the game. Like you know, if you if you look at like how to craft like black stones or something, right? And you need to use like a lot of powders and some other stuff that, you know, to craft certain things. And, you know, an item like 100K or even like 300K, it costs you like a few million to make. Like, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I actually brought that up on Jordan stream. Black gem frags, you can craft them. And with the new price of conks, I, don't, I haven't even looked into it, but maybe they're worth crafting. There's like all these recipes you can make, use to craft it. Oh. Interesting. I I don't know if it's worth it or not. I haven't looked into it. Probably not, but <laughs> Oh, good stuff. Good stuff. I think uh we've covered quite a bit here. Uh maybe it's time to move on to the next part. You guys ready? Yeah. Woo -woo. Who woo? Or... <laughs> so <laughs> the next part, I don't know if you had an idea ready for this one, Russ, but um I wanted uh everyone to come up with an idea of a new life skill. Ooh, me first. <laughs> Go ahead, man. All right, so let's see. Climbing. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, archaeology <laughs> is something that I want to see in BDO. Uh, yeah. I want I want to be able to run around the map and find treasures around the map. Random spawn. Doesn't have to all be the same spawns. Like, mm -hmm. let me actually explore. Give me a metal detector or something, or Dude. a mine detector or something, you know? Like, let me go explore, make the money decent. Yeah. And there's there's an entire life skill there. And even if you, even if it's not on land, throw it underwater. Dude, like, there let are... Us, let us go explore stuff underwater. There are so many caves, so many ruins in the game already. It would fit right in. I mean, it may make it a guilt event, you know? Entire, like, 100 people, like... With the metal detectors, like, <laughs> scanning the area. <laughs> I mean, they tried price? something, like, with the gill drill. But the thing is, it has to be worth everyone's time, you know? Like, there's that uh, drill thing we never really... Yeah, yeah. That it never really... just role-playing, yeah. That really didn't catch on, but... So how would you... So how would you... It's, uh, mobile has that in desert. <laughs> really? Damn. Like but, metal detectors. Oh, okay. 
So D, what kind of activities would you want to see with this? Uh, what in, in archaeology? Yeah, I mean they could just expand on gathering, just throw stuff to gather underwater. Let us go. Like archaeology, if I had to make it a life skill, I would give it swim speed mm-hmm. for mastery, like more movement in the water, so you can actually move around, or give us mounts in the water, <laughs> so we can like when explore it comes to the seabed. When it comes to swim speed, like the speed we're getting with the costume should be the bare minimum. Like, I think it's it's a scam to like give us the game like with like speed like that's like. A, so huge ocean and yeah you know like the the swimming like is so clunky and so bugs out if you don't have the costume so it's just like unplayable unswimmable i would say like so <laughs> the speed with the costume because there is somewhat speed it's sort of uh you know you don't notice the bugs and you know clunkiness <laughs> so that should be the bare minimum sw- uh, swimming and then when you have the costume maybe increase that speed by double again so yeah, that, that's that's my input in, in swimming. Like, you know, swimming should be like, yeah. Yeah, archaeology. It's, it's, it's unswimmable. It's equals you can't even go to like the second island in Velia. <laughs> go ahead, D. Yeah, so, yeah, master equals swim speed for archaeology. I think that would be a decent way to close the gap too for people who can't spend money. Or just a mount. Like, horses only is so ridiculous. I got an Give add-on idea. idea. Right. So head case say underwater is the most underutilized region of the game. I guess because one of the reasons for that is uh, we can't use animation or skills or anything underwater, like the way the game design. So that limits, like when you look at the yeah. application of how you can do everything in the water, like that that opens up a lot of you know room to improvements. But right now with the game design, uh yeah, you need to be like on land to use most of your skills. That's why, you know, I don't know what they can implement other than clicking R. Well, yeah. you would only need skills if you want to, you know, perform fights, but just make gathering better under the water and make recipes out of this gathering. Well, here's an idea for archaeology. You know how... You make workshop stuff that you can go gather for underwater and make stuff in the workshop. Yeah. You know how there's so much of this... Uh, there's this whole lore of the tech and stuff, right? Sage made all this tech, and there's multiple ruins, multiple grind spots featured around it. Well, maybe archaeology allows you to discover like a new mount system where it's like a functional mount. It's not something to replace horses on land. But let's say one is like a little submarine thing, which you can get into and gather through and put progression in that. Utilize workshops that you discover through archaeology, recipes you discover from archaeology, mats, and use that to progress. You can ride a- crocodile or like a hump whale or something oh, i was thinking more of the tech stuff like you see in kratuga and oh, okay. history like a rubik's cube or something yeah or a little submarine you know a little ocean gate going on here <laughs> i'm kidding but uh... i mean they already have that kind of uh, uh they, what is it they have they the technology. already have that no not the technology they have the designs in the water already mm-hmm. just like that ah. they're ruined designs like if you yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. In the waters it, a lot of it already looks like Histria and Achman and yeah. stuff like that. And there's so many caves in the game, like caves and ruins that are underutilized, just dead content. Nothing's there. Maybe some sapphire mines or something. <laughs> but there was a cave uh, when the underwater gathering came. Like you could go, uh, you know, gather like lobsters and pearls and stuff, but it was like limited. So you don't have to go in the water it was just inside and one of the islands if i remember correctly oh there is one more life skill i want to see in the game so i'm going to use i'm going to take the time to say i have two so archaeology is one and i want to see them use something with hides in this game tanning is so criminally underused it's ridiculous how bad it is yeah and it's being flooded from hunting and sniping forever now with low effort Uh, no low effort right you basically just get it for killing the mob yeah and uh it's just i don't know like they need to add something either cosmetics that you can craft out of it out of the hides that can be sold on the market yeah. make it a ton of hides if you have to you know make it the sink make the sink meet the the not the supply mm. but let us sell make cra- cosmetics in the game like the tiger spirit helmet have you guys seen i yeah. wear it all day long on my character i love it we need to be able to craft cosmetics like this in the game through hides or 
somehow furniture as well maybe furniture fine or even throw it in uh passive trading make a crates out of it like yeah. hide crates so I, I call it and say new life skill of taming animals monster that gives different buffs or extra looting so we you tame pets. an animal yeah we have pets um we have like dean and stuff like the horses give some buffs but that's about it yeah <clears throat> jordan so how about asking you asking about teleportation system so he's saying it's bad it's better Just than bad. nothing you click uh, i don't need 10 minutes portal transition uh with the tanning i think that they should come out with an mm -hmm. enchanting life skill where you can uh, take all the hides or whatever, craft enchantments for either your gear, like weapons, armor, um, and maybe make it like a temporary buff, like a one hour, you know, buff or something that adds more damage or more tankiness. Um, and you could, you could also apply it to like life skill stuff as well. Some enchantments that you could like put on your life skill gear. Nice, nice. Yeah, I could see that coming coming into play. But if they do, uh, like one, one thing they need to work on, which they haven't done in a long time, is like we have like meals up to guru, right? Like in order to or in order to craft this item, you need artisan cooking. But they don't have like recipes for like guru 35, guru 40, guru 45, like mm -hmm. something to give players something to look forward to. They could add to all of the life skills. Uh, incentives yeah we definitely need new recipes like for so long yeah there's still like you know it's been seven years we still craft like balanos <laughs> media and maybe serendia like the same meals like for the last seven years like you not know, to yeah. mention there's so many like the there's so many substitutions so many substitutions go into the same stuff so it looks like there's a lot of stuff to do but it's like they all make the same recipe yeah yeah ingredients are like so messed up in my opinion it was just like you know when this game designed they're like oh well it's mmrpg you know there's gonna be people who wants the life skill so what can we do oh, every game has cooking where well, i will just put some random stuff to create like some bare minimum recipes and then there you go and the buffs is not even like worth using like you know this game is completely playable if that wasn't even like food like if food gives like 50 stamina or 100 HP, like, you look at other games, like, they doubles your, like, health, they double your, like, all your buffs, so it's worth using those foods, like, that's a big difference, but in here, the foods gives, like, what, like, a plus two damage reduction, like, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, like, they the don't want it to be too much. Foods, they are something, but they are not, they are not too great compared to other games. Gotcha, yeah, yeah. What about you, Pansy? What kind of oh. life skill you want to see in BDO? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. You guys ready for this? Well, I would want to see a some sort of thieving. Like some I don't know what they'd call it. Thievery, thieving, whatever you want to call it. But that's something I want to see because there's a lot of open area. A lot of, you know you mean piracy? Sure, piracy could be a part of it. Let me go through like all of the ideas I have in terms of the content <laughs> it could be. Like Obviously, so inspiration. Start, maybe I, I read the chat first. And oh, then, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Because it's going to be long. So, Enzo will say the spawn rate and the notes on the water resources is so bad as well. Uh, and then Golden say make custom to sell for crons. I don't know if they are going to do that. I mean, it, it's an idea since there's crons on the NPCs for two, three million. And then enhancement for crystal protection. Creating more group life skill things like Kalk and Whales will be mint and and then light skillers say well pick pockets already in the game. Yeah, but that's for just like questing, right? That's pretty much it. All right, go ahead, Pensy. That's that's pretty much it. <laughs> it's time to expand on it. Yes, pickpocketing. I mean obviously inspiration is from the OG RuneScape, right? But there's a lot of things in the game that it could actually fit into. I mean, yes, pickpocketing, there are stalls. You can steal from stalls here as well. And you know, you could also uh, take it to a next level. There's a lot of empty buildings that, you know, aren't utilized in the game. You know, add some uh, additional dynamic to it. Put some NPCs in there. Or put their treasure chests in there. 
you know, higher requirements in terms of level mastery in order to successfully pickpocket it. If you get caught, you know, there should be a penalty where, you know, you, you're losing either some, something similar to karma. I wouldn't want to jump on the karma train, but because that's too much punishment, but something similar, which would limit you. Town guards start uh, taking notice of you a bit more, maybe a small little jail cell for five, 10 minutes or something. But, you know, there's a lot of ways you can incorporate just basics of it, but there's a lot more you can do in terms of the content. So in terms of solo content, obviously these heists and stuff you can do alone, but they could make it more complex for higher level heists. Like, for example, there is a castle. Maybe you can rob the castle uh, and there could it could be a group content. Let's say you're in a party of five people. In order to even get to the vault, you have to get past the guards. The guards are patrolling. You have to be able to uh, stealthily get through there. And you can use some form of, uh, you know, something similar to Amity, where you can probably talk up a guard and lure him to the side somewhere while the rest of your party goes through and unlocks something and finally make your way to the main vault where you actually get a big reward and, uh, you know, worthwhile in terms of money, in terms of XP and stuff. But Dude, I love this idea. It sounds so dope. <laughs> I'm going like... So... I think what I will do, I will probably go to Jordan's house and steal his alchemy. Not tool players, and okay. To, <laughs> give, give it to D, and then you know D and Jordan can get in fights. Jordan say like, you know, so you you don't want me to progress to G fifty alchemy, and then no D say like, you know, no, I have to get to G. <laughs> He's already G fifty. What does he need? <laughs> D's yeah, already. Like, I don't. I don't want anyone else to get to G fifty. <laughs> How many people in piracy have G fifty alchemy? Four. Almost so, four. Yeah. But yeah, um, going on. Light, Light Skiller also say G50 Tivery allows you to steal furniture from other players' as Yeah, that's pretty much what I was saying. <laughs> I've, I'm not trying to mess with other players, but, you know, castles, churches, you know, there could be some... Uh, I mean, there's, there's a lot of places in the game which aren't utilized, which are like underground caverns, caves, and stuff. So a perk for having a high thiever is you can break into those and they could be a safe house out in the middle of nowhere where you probably have access to, you know, some thieving NPC where, you know, maybe storage, maybe uh, church buff locations, just little perks around the world where uh, in addition to what we already have in the main main spots. But, you know, I had more ideas in terms of the content. Firstly, the gear, you know, it can, it can have a cool look to it, you know, something Assassin's Creed style. But exclusive thieving items, I would want lockpicks, which allows us to get access into the safe rooms and do perform the activities of uh, thieving a little bit better, a little bit better, and progressively, uh, you know, it's one of those life skilling tools that you just equip. Um, also, a unique thing I'd like to see is a hook shot, something that's on your character and adds, you know, you're trying to break into that house, you need to be able to get into it. You have to hook shot onto the chimney. <laughs> I mean, we already have the Batman landing in Magnus. We might as well get the Batman pull up. Exactly. Uh, they, they have it in the new Crimson <laughs> Crimson Desert. They have the yeah. Uh, when will you right? see that game? <laughs> but the thing is yeah. that hook shot. You know, it'd be <laughs> something that everyone would want. Like you know, in life's in sorry in Node Wars PvP, having that hook shot, scale the walls, breach the castle. Hey, it could add another dynamic to it. Um, and another game was coming out. Was it like Throne of Liberty or something? They had like hook shots. Throne of Liberty is a meme, man. It has autoplay, auto battle, and stuff. But yeah, I think uh, it had something similar, probably. I think a lot yeah. of games have something like that. Like even WoW has a skill on a rogue, which is like a hook shot. But we can we can craft like traps uh, and put in a house to <laughs> you know. Yeah, better traps and stuff. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Um, one other idea I had for this is actually piracy, like a big ass merchant boat is out in the sea. You have to track it down, you know, while you're sailing on the ship, you'll have some clues. You could probably see it in the far away on the distant, some glint, uh, some sparkling thing in the horizon. You have to go, you have to, it's pretty fast. Your party members have to hook shot onto there and go knock out the captain to make the boat stop. Then you can board as well. You can throw in some PvE in there to battle the crew and put a boss battle inside. And then you have to load the ship, your ship, with all the loot that you plunder from it. And the more you take, the slower you become. And there's going to be military corvettes that go around trying to uh, catch you and sink your ship while you're making your getaway to Pirate Island to cash in. 
a oh, lot of dynamics, but yeah, sorry. That, yeah. that's almost like arcades, the Delphinite treasure ship. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not not but, even the but, treasure but, ship. But it's remember yeah, but it's cool for BDO. I like it. Remember, like so we we are asking we are asking for improvements and Pansy going creating an entire different game. <laughs> entire brand new game. Hey, <laughs> I was that's beyond improvements. I think. No, I like it. I like it. It it adds I mean, group. I like uh, it, but, it yeah, adds it's... group ocean. Like you would have your guildies or teammates on the cannons. You know, one boat guy driving. The cannons in this game is a joke, right? <laughs> so what I With wanted was, now. I was aiming for something which is a pretty long activity something like 40 minutes an hour you know because even uh, the only other content that's like that is like other than grinding is dungeons and those after you have enough gear it's a meme you just blast through it skip mechanics with the amount of dps you do and stuff so i was thinking of it like this there there's a solo activity you can do there's something which is like 15 20 minute or 30 minute activity which is you know robbing a church or robbing uh doing the heist the castle heist and stuff and this would be the pinnacle of that content where going and taking out merchant ships and robbing them and getting loot for it and pretty good rewards. But I love it, dude. I love it. One final idea I had was utilizing those wagons that are moving around on your map. Like there are always these wagons you see. Go rob those. <laughs> There's also bandits uh, all running around on your map, right? Go rob them. Bandits uh, found some loot go go jump them too and steal it you know there's a lot of little things that so you can, can add become it. an adventure yeah i mean like it, get rewarded it, for killing bandits it doesn't have to be just you out there uh robbing a npc or a stall but maybe like a rotation of things like oh first you go rob that wagon you go cash in then you rob the bandits nearby then you go to a ne nearby town you hit everything there then you go to the next town and on the way you knock out a few more objectives so i just wanted something which would move you around rather than just sitting in one spot but yeah that's my idea thievery <laughs> it was fun coming up with that so there's an idea enhancing weapons that adds glowing effects or aura around armor i think we already have uh some gear that does that Right, yeah, I think uh, swimming. I think we mentioned that as well. Pen Black Stars, Pen Goderite have glow effects. There are certain costumes, especially like the Succession costumes, which have it. And the Shy has a costume which completely changes the color of her skill animations, which I think is awesome. And we need to see in other classes for sure. But, you know, something with difficulty, but sellable, I think that would be cool. So let's, let's get back to life skill. What do you guys want? as a life skill um i think you're the only one left or a new, you and jordan new life skill yeah me and pansy gave our <laughs> it's just you jordan as well so we talk about teeth and archaeology we talk about archaeology uh yeah i have to come up with something on spot yeah all right. How about how about you let Jordan I mean, go? I, Jordan, I, I did you have anything? Improvements for farming, but that's most likely yeah. improvements. But it's it's it can be a new game like um, you plantations. Know, like one of the ideas. Farmhouses, plantations. Look. Yeah. Yeah. Full expansion so, to farming. <laughs> yeah, full expansion to farming. Like you know, we can have like a barn that we can. Uh, put workers in like let's say you create a barn and put next like similar to like tent and you put next to your farms and then that barn you can assign like let's say 10 or 15 workers and that barn is going to have like processing uh benches as well so you can assign certain uh workers to certain benches so if they get like potato or something and then they can process that to flour or make into dough or like you know there's going to be a season system like you know every week there is going to be a season and certain seeds can grow in certain season some seeds is going to take like you know half season some seeds might take uh two season to grow and you know let's say you know like the wheat maybe like is more protected can grow in two different seasons and you know one maybe like grows only in the summer season you know let's say like every week there's going to be a different season that should change the marketplace as well you know like one season you can stock up your 
materials and the next season you know those materials going to go higher and then you can sell those materials on you know and like that that can be an option as well yeah and in terms of like you know fertilizer you know uh, let's say you have like a one huge farm and you know one worker or two workers you assign uh, to do let's say the fertilize the fertilize the land or soil and then they put like seeds and then you can like you know how we have like uh, seed menu on the screen like this that's going to be like uh, more advanced <clears throat> so as a as a player you can manage your seeds like you can open uh, you know certain farm and then that's going to open like the entire farm farm like let's say my inventory is like blocks and mm -hmm. each block is you can plant one seed let's say there's like one farm has like 50 blocks and you say like okay 20 of these put wheat and, you know, 15 of these put like, you know, pepper and 10 of these uh, put onion. And then, you know, your worker is going to go grab the seeds from your uh, storage uh, chest in your, um, you know, barn. And then from there, uh, it's going to plant the seeds. And when, they, when it comes to harvesting time, that worker is going to go and harvest those seeds. And then if the season's suitable, then it's going to, plant those seeds for uh, for that season and then you can have like pre presets for different season and then you know you can say if it's summer or you know you can select one preset and you know all the seeds for that uh, season you can plant it and then if you try to plant like a seeds you know for that season that's not suitable it's gonna say like you know you can't you can't plant these seeds for this season or something and yeah, the worker is going to put the fertilizer, watering, and plant the seeds and harvest the seeds. And then some of the workers in the barn is going to uh, process those seeds to, you know, higher materials, let's say flour or dough. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, like, you play the game. Like milk, <laughs> you're, just letting, you're just letting the workers play the entire game. What, what, what are we going to play? No, you, you, do, you do the management. You did <laughs> bro like we asked for a like life skill. He, simulator. He, he came up with Farmville Sims entire new game fuck it new <laughs> client <laughs> no no that's I mean, and then and then you can use those to make cooking like <laughs> <laughs> so you can't play the game again you just go afk cooking <laughs> you can't play the game again yeah but, but active farming yeah be, i think uh, active farming would have a place would be, in that will be interesting in my opinion all right i have something to talk about that we i mean there's about. a lot more tweaks i can do like a lot more polishing it's just something i come up on spot so yeah you know there you go uh, one second, D. Uh, Jordan, did you have an idea for a new life skill you want to go over? Yeah, it was the enchanting one. Oh, okay. You already got it in. He wants to add stat lines to gear, temporary stat lines. That, mm, yeah, 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 yeah. That you can craft up. Yep. But when when you think about it, like we have the farms, right? We send the workers uh, to <laughs> clean the print the farms, right? And then we have <laughs> workshops in the towns that process items to higher levels you can process materials with workers it, it's not profitable but you can mm -hmm. so what is what is missing only thing is planting planting is missing and that's about it so if you make the workers replant then that's about it i yeah, think they want you to do the planting it's just not... yeah i think they want you to play at least a little <laughs> bit of the game <laughs> yeah they, good stuff good stuff they I, I have an idea oh go ahead Jordan. Uh, I was going to say, um, they could come out with like a jewel crafter type of like thing. Instead of like yeah. grinding for crystals, you could have like a jewel jeweler or whatever, jeweler life skiller. I could have seen like crystals being a temporary thing, which we're constantly crafting and earning. And then, you know, they expire after like a week or something. Yeah. I don't think they'd, uh, People would, would be on probably, board with it that now. Would probably be better than it permanently breaking. You know, like uh, yeah. I mean, you you'd have to replenish them anyway. You just have to replenish them quicker if you lost them or something. Because it, it is pretty expensive, man. If you lost a gear and tier, that's a six build plus item. It's rough. For the average player, that's three days of silver. <laughs> I mean, even for a grinder, six hours. That is huge. So, like, uh, unless I know I'm safe, I don't even put it on. Like, unless I'm in a Marnie uh, alone. Because it's not even a matter of being ganked. It's a matter of the game, like, it happened so many times in the past. On stream, I lost a crystal. One billion crystal. 
that could easily have been a guarantee tier where I get a black now screen. Now crystal like four or five billion, right? Yeah, yeah. It's worth six billion because even though the max price is like four and a half or something, they're always on pre-order. And if you want to craft your own, you have to buy the individual parts for like two billion each or something. So yeah, All it's right. rough, man. Let, let me bring something up so we can talk Go about it. Go for it. Hit it. Let's, uh, how about revisiting the idea of rank one housing in BDO? <laughs> so the, the way Go it's set it. up right now is that you, you're PVPing for ranking in the house. Uh, first of all, the money is totally outdated. It's, I've held rank one housing now for what, two months? I have four rank one houses. Mm -hmm. I think I've probably made like three mil or something. It's just <laughs> so bad. The money is just so so bad. You lose money because the work the nodes are better now. Yeah. So for just having the rank one. So they need to revisit rank one housing. What they should do, in my opinion, is make it so that all players can hit have to hit a equipment threshold for the building that they're renting or purchasing. Once you have the, the furniture threshold in there say okay this building that i currently am living in needs 5000 points equipment points to unlock the monopoly house yeah think of all the players that will go unlock all the you know houses that can make you extra side cash yeah and all the materials that are going to sink in the game you know all the life skilling that's going to be taking place all the gathering all the crafting if they opened it up to everyone instead of just rank one. Yeah. Right. So everyone can get 5,000 points. You get this little extra crate being made, uh, you know, for passive drip money. Yep. And yeah, I think that's what they should do. They should revisit the rank one housing and make it so that it's just an equipment based, uh, a, a furniture point based. And, you know, they could be clever. They could have some of their developers like figure out, make it harder in some houses so only certain furnitures can get you the points because it's a tiny house so you got to be like clever about your placement your strategy of placement you got to have the inventory of furniture right so you got to prepare well like there's a whole life skilling care bearing that you can do in that just by removing that whole rank one nonsense mm -hmm. yeah that's definitely outdated rank one like you wanna you wanna visit that house? You can't even move inside. Like, what's the point? It defeats the purpose. <laughs> it's become like a storage yeah. box rather than a house. Yeah, that's true. It, it looks awful. Like a lot of them. Some of them managed to make it look pretty good, but for majority, it's just stuffing it in with stuff. You know, just get that yeah. interior points, which yeah, sucks. Just, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Very that's outdated. That, that's what I'm saying. They should revisit it. Yeah. Have people sit down, be clever about placement strategies. And, you know, set points, and then once you reach the points, you get a little bit of extra drip cash. And it rewards you over time for getting all the materials together and crafting all the stuff that you need to reach those points. I could see them doing a big revamp of just workshops, housing. Buildings in general, yeah. yeah buildings <laughs> in general. And they can that can, like, really galvanize, like, the whole game. Like, it can affect everyone. Because it's not a great deal of effort to click your, you know, click on a house and unlock it with cp and start something crafting you know see, anyone can do it yo is that see an arc age for example a comparison that i can make like, yeah but an arc age it was worth your time setting up your house nice and professionally yeah because it was open world so people ran by your house and be like oh my god whose mansion is that it looks yeah so cool. in this game it's instance so you can't really show it off to anybody unless you're rank one through ten Mm -hmm. um, and if they happen to run by your house, and then if they even want to go in to see what the rank one or ten looks like, yeah. But instead of showing it off to other players, just make it worth you having by giving you a little bit of extra silver, because everyone in BDO loves silver. Like that's what we like, right? That's yeah. what everybody likes in BDO, silver per hour. So just give us a little bit of extra silver, worth our time, and you know, watch people dry out markets. Markets will literally sell out for material crafting people yeah. will just go craft furnitures and they've already added all the uh, pearl shop furnitures in crafting so it's like sky's the limit you know let us make a make a system around it now i could see that happening yeah good stuff
Yeah, it's like the whole workshop thing. It used to be very interesting. Like back in the day, we used to have like a, a factory for black stones and stuff. Like very yeah, early refineries. Refineries. Like, super and, like there used to be a lot of making, uses for it. Yeah, who is making these weapons anymore? No Weapon one. workshops. Nobody's making this garbage anymore. Yeah. It's 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 a shame. It really is pathetic and sad that it's taken this long to address. And I, I really hope it's next on their list. Like, it's it used to be sad. one of the unique features of BDO, like the whole very, very node, sad. node features and everything, node system, workers, refine like workshops and everything. I mean, once upon a time, like I, people would always have like ship stuff going on, like because it was it was profitable to make and sell, maybe even enhance and sell. So, a lot of a potential there. Is there anything else we can talk about? I think we covered everything I had on the list. I was going to add something, but I forgot. <laughs> I was going to ask a question. Maybe I'll remember in the future. Oh, no. <laughs> Jordan, you got any thoughts? Any uh, lingering thoughts about anything? Uh, do you guys want to talk about our own progression? Like what we're working at in the yeah. game? Yeah, that's cool. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Why don't you kick it off? <clears throat> uh, okay. So, like, for me, I'm working on uh, Pen Alchemy Clothes. Uh, I just finished my fucking cook clothes. Took like literally like a month and a half of just <laughs> sadness. Struggle with <laughs> how uh, many taps? Sixty? Uh, fifty fucking attempts. Sheesh. Rough. Uh, now I'm working on alchemy uh, and pushing my CP. I'm almost five hundred one CP. Nice. Good stuff. Oh, nice. Keep up the good word, uh, good work. And how far are you taking that uh, gathering going for G fifty? <laughs> you know he is. <laughs> what kind of I question is that? <laughs> <laughs> well, in one month he'll be there. At least then you can show off your secret gathering spot to everyone. <laughs> right. Oh, hold on. He has to get full bar in G fifty first. So a month and a half. Oh god. <laughs> Uh, good stuff, man. And how how's your gear and everything? Like in terms of uh, accessories. So basically, yeah, I'm just working towards all the pen clothes, the pen manas clothes. Okay. And then uh, pen tools, and and basically the reason why I'm going for pen tools is for all my alts. Okay. Um, because now with the mastery crystals, you basically can get your alts to 2k really, really easily. Yeah, I saw you were AFKing, um, sh AFK shoveling. Oh, yeah. Wow. Strat, so big brain. <laughs> yeah, every, really, night you really... every night you basically guarantee that part of your account is progressing if you just gather on alts at night. Yeah. They get three levels, you wake up, you get a little bit of extra money. Yeah. And then you pass your gear to them and, you know, boosted, boosted gather session. Your farms are going, your you, workers you are going. Like loyalty, loyalty weights on them as well. Uh, for like extra to 150, 200, 200 how weight, yeah. How much loyalty points do all of you have? Uh, 14,000. No, I, I have 20k. 17,000. <laughs> I'm at 71,000. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> you not buy anything. I, I don't use it. Yeah. <laughs> I really should. Like, Wait, you should at least buy the stuff. Uh, like, I think my um, main account is like almost like close to a million. <laughs> you should at least buy like, well, Okay, for anybody Please that's what? listening, the new players or new players in general or veterans that have loyalty sitting there, you should at least buy storages. At Got the very that. Least. Yeah. You should be buying a family weight, mm -hmm. obviously. Got it. Yep. Worker lodging is yeah, huge. And stuff Got like them all. Huge through loyalty. If you don't have it, get it. Uh, stable to an extent. Not really needed, but you know it's quality of life for your account. Yeah, you basically yeah, shouldn't do, have do loyalty. Uh, character expansion, sorry, that's the 10k, right? Character expansion, yeah. I'm not yeah. paying pearls for that. Yeah, so you basically shouldn't have loyalty sitting on the account. If you have anything that's uh, an increase to the quality of life of the account, uh, like the things I mentioned, you should be at zero loyalty, basically, unless right. you already have it all purchased. Unfortunately, I do yeah, on my buy, main buy character. Permanent, permanent stuff there. 
not not consumables. Oh, you know, if you're oil. buying consumables there, then it's you know waste of loyalty. I yeah, focus on permanent stuff first. Yeah, character slots is perfect if you don't want to pay for it. Yeah. There was this one time where we got a lot of easy loyalty. I forgot what it was. I think it was the old BSA gave loyalty or something, some event. I don't know. But that's why I had so much of it stacked up. But yeah, good stuff. What about you, Russ? How's your gear, your progression? What are you doing in video? Uh, so, as everyone know, I created a fresh account in NA and I played uh somewhat actively for about two months and then took like three months or so break from game just doing like real life stuff and then i recently got back to game like uh last week or this week a few days ago or something so i'm uh i've done the uh pretty much like uh main story quest line for the new region explore and started doing sniper hunting that's going pretty good i think i got the hang of it and other than that, you know, I'm leveling my cooking. I have full tri mono set, tet, uh, uh, mono cook clothes, tet hunter clothes, pen butcher knife. And I'm guru 46, almost 47 cooking. And my hunting is like guru 32. So wow. I think it's going good. I have about uh, 50 billion saved up. Uh, so since I got back, like I, I, I didn't have much. I had like five, 5 billion in in one one week almost one week yeah i utilized some of the stuff so i made about 45 billion in a week so i'm saving for a pen clothes uh pen monos clothes and then hunting right that i will hunting I'll clothes need right? to buy like a hunting clothes uh hunting will probably be difficult to get maybe i'll uh, focus on getting cooking before hunting gotcha and depends which one is available yeah, yeah. Uh, i would prefer hunting over cooking but yeah if cooking is available i'll buy that um i need to use my jace hammer i have j two jace hammer that needs to expire uh, that's gonna expire so i'll probably buy like a tet awakening uh black star and then use those jace hammer i have like 240 fail stack already so if it goes it goes that's another thing i need to do so in the next two weeks, I need to save about 40 billion to get all those done. And then I'll probably focus on TED accessories, TED monos, over grinding gear. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Once I get all those, I should be 2K cooking. Then I should be able to compete with the rest of the server in regarding to cooking. And then I'll focus on leveling hunting to G50. Good stuff. So that's that's pretty much my plan for the next month. Nice. How about you, D? I think uh, some of the people <laughs> want a recap of what happened. Uh... <laughs> How about D? Man, what is <laughs> D up to? Well, about 10 days ago, I had the dream life skill gear that everybody would want. You know, I had a pen menace accessory. I had full tech clothes, full tech tool to have the levels, as anybody that knows me knows I have the levels. Hell yeah. And then something didn't feel right. <laughs> so I blew it all away. And I just finished my reclimb 10 days later. Really sweaty 10 days. Yep. Uh, now I'm back to Endgame Masteries in full Pen Noah. And I'm uh, going to start the reclimb towards Pen Menos again. And yeah. other than that, I'm poor, zero silver, because I literally, <laughs> ju literally just finished the reclimb. For the uh, yeah. untrained uh, gamer here, uh, why the pen Jer Uh The way it's currently set up in BDO is that if you have a certain amount of levels with pen blue vendor gear, Jeranoas in this case, with mastery crystals, you can then reach the end game masteries. And since it sells for a bad price and it cannot be tapped, you're almost forced to keep it, right? Yeah. Unless you are so desperate that you sell it for 10 bill. Good for gamblers, yeah. Yeah, it's basically uh, baby-proofing my account so that I can't uh, roulette or drop down below endgame in any way. And Unless where do you... I get to that desperate point where I sell it for 60 bill. And where do you get the Jaranoa gear? Uh, at the vendor of Jerno, you can use the search uh, function, the NPC magnifying glass, to find yep. them in Calfion. Good stuff. 
as far as life skill leveling, um, pretty much, uh, you know, fully leveled wherever I want to be. I'm high levels. Um, most of my AFK time is just moving crates. I have like 200 bill locked in trading because, of course, they haven't buffed it. They haven't made it easier for people that participate in passive trading. They just, it's so easy to lock your money into crates and then you just ask that. You, you get no relief <laughs> from PA. They really hate trading in this game, which what is you... so unusual for compared to other Korean MMOs. How about a quick, uh, m- quick uh, touch point on the new trading after they changed it? Active, active trading. I didn't even look into it. They want you to be on call, and be a stockbroker. <laughs> no, uh, how can you do that in a in a game that's set up to be AFK? It's so weird. Yeah, I, was... I, I think it was a failure. I think it was a failure. I don't, I don't know anybody that really enjoys it, but I'm sure there are people that enjoy it. Uh, I think I they should have just done something it's like bartering like on land. Play than uh, making profit or progression. Yeah, it's it's definitely more role play than the money. Um, and then speaking of active trading, real quick to brush up on it. Um, the merchant ring used to be a life skill treasure, right? Only accessible through trading. Yep. So what did they do? They gave it to the grinders. They yeah. buffed, you know, I don't think they buffed any rates, but you know, you killed so many monsters so much faster than you can trade. Obviously you're going to get it in a short amount of time. And r- uh, so- remember the old effect of merchant ring before right. the, in the old marketplace, when it was all bidding, the merchant ring used to give you an additional percentage chance to win the bid. Oh yeah! Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't anything about the price. It was your chance to even win the item. Yeah. That so was, now yeah. with the active rework, I guess they totally forgot that there's people who don't combat in this game. Uh, so life skillers get got shafted. Now you get paid for doing the merchant ring grind, but it's like even longer now, right? Because uh, before the rework, you could get two pieces in Valencia City just by trading in Valencia City itself. Yeah, but now you can't. You can't even do that. You have to go all the way to Altanova across the desert, or through you know the Gahaz path. Uh, so basically, they added money to the time that it takes. But uh, is it worth it? No, it's not. Doesn't seem worth it. Yeah, and speaking of merchant ring, that's uh, that's kind of why I made the change recently for my gear. I sold my accessories, went full grinding. I bought three pen accessories out of it because the markets were oh, low. Nice. Yep, got Pen Latens, Pen Eye of the Rune, Pen Voltara. Oh, um, that was worth the swap then. It was good. It was yeah, a good swap. 312 AP, 393 DP. I have a pathway to, relatively easy pathway to 401 DP. So I'm at the point where I can actually go and do Olin's pretty well. Uh, hopefully, you know, I can start finding groups. And that's why I you know, moved on to a PvP guild and a high-end PvE guild so I can... Uh, you know, make a uh, groups myself and go for that because that's the next goal. Unless I get the Olin's piece, it's no point even going for any of the other pieces, in my opinion, because the Olin's piece is just such a difficult grind. So, you know, if I get that, then I'll go all in for Merchant Ring and someday I'll make my return. Yeah, they say <laughs> because Olin is still somewhat good money, they say ideally uh, use that time and, you know, grind Olin. To yeah. get the emergent piece while making good money because in the future they might bring a different spot that's uh, a lot more money than Olin's and you know you will be wasting the Kia Olin's is already the merchant ring. <laughs> there's already the Kia Olin's uh, where people are grinding and there's you know the the Kia spots which give a lot more money like Thornwood so yeah it is already being sidelined. So How about Dekia life skilling anytime soon, PA? Where's our frenzy? Dekia hunting. <laughs> yeah, where's our frenzy gathering and stuff? Yeah. Uh, but we got mini games. I guess it's sort of similar, kind of. Maybe but we then got you something. get bottlenecked by energy, right? You can't gather forever. But they did introduce the new energy meal, but 22 hour cooldown. Uh, if I get the merchant alts, ring, yeah. gotta have alts. If I get the merchant ring, I'll come back to life skill in full force and play. A different level <laughs> on the a different marketing, plane marketing pvp yeah and yeah, I, mean, I mean i mean that's basically what's setting apart end game cooks right now is you either have 2k and the merchant ring or you don't yeah or and the cook time reduction is another stat line that separates you yeah 
Otherwise, everybody's the same, doing the same recipes. You mm-hmm. know? Especially with the new crystals, which uh, really right, breached the right. graph. Closing the, the gap. gap. Yeah. Oh, I let's 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 to... quickly wait. Wait. Oh, so go ahead. Go ahead. When it comes to like doing improvement for life skill, you know how I said when they improve something, they does they don't really check what other things yeah. it affects. So if they end up improving cooking, uh, they need to improve uh, nodes and node production immediately right away. Because uh, right now, like if an item is bottleneck and it's gatherable, that's fine. You know, that's going to improve the uh, material prices. So if you can't have that, you know, yeah. if you can't craft because that item is not available on the market, you can still go and gather with like lion meat, snake meat, or scorpion meat. So those items for to me, like, is never a bottleneck. What is actually truly bottleneck is like, for example, you know, if market run out of eggs, if market run out of nutmegs or freaky or something, you know, there are certain, only certain amount of, you know, nutmeg you can get a day from nodes, certain amount of, uh, you know, date or figs you can get from the nodes. So if entire markets bottleneck by the items that you get from the uh, nodes, which I noticed this in uh, Mina in the past, like there was no nutmeg in the market. You could probably get like two, three K nutmeg maximum of the market per day. And then, you know, two, three K from the nodes. And what are you going to cook with that? You know, you, you can gather snake scorpion, but you are, bottleneck with nutmeg and you go try to gather nutmeg i actually went there try to gather the spawn time is like i don't know like six seven hours or something there's like 10 or something oh there. no you can gather and then you know like it's 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 bottleneck and it it completely dries out and stops the entire production like you can't do anything it just kills the entire life skill of cooking so to me like they need to improve the nodes, so nodes materials should never be a bottleneck. And if it's a bottleneck, they should implement a place people can actually go gather. Just so, active you know, for it, can, yeah. Yeah, active. Make it active. Yeah. I'm sure they're going to improve the life skill cooking, and I'm sure this is going to happen, and nodes going to be bottleneck. Just, uh, you know, keep my word. In the next two years, <laughs> you guys will Two years. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking ahead, thinking ahead. <laughs> yeah, you guys will remember and say, like Ross said, you know, the knots were going to become a bottleneck. Hopefully Let, not. Hopefully if they watch uh, this video. <laughs> do you guys think they should... Re- uh, let's ask each one, each player uh, in the podcast here. Go ahead. Do you think they should raise G50s to higher guru levels and the same for masteries? Russ, you go first. Uh, and say yes or no and why. Or why not? Okay, well, so most of the case, no, because like gathering, for example, G50 will take you like years to get G50, like unless you are doing like some weird method, you know, and right. abusing the system, you know, the gathering is like already difficult enough, and right. cooking I think is ideal to get G50. Hunting is ideal in my opinion, uh, because leveling those skills shouldn't be your like entire goal. You know, like it should be something, a challenge, you know, that you can achieve. Like, you know, cooking might take you a few months to get uh, to max level. Like hunting, again, maybe like six months or so, maybe longer to get the G50. I think anything beyond uh, that much like time frame? six months, yeah, yeah, like anything beyond six months is is good. Like, like if, if it takes you like a month to get max level, it might be a bit like uh, too, too small. But yeah. I think... If if they are like max level six months for any type of life skill, I think it's ideal. Right, and uh, the amount of time it takes to like get to you know G fifty hunting, I think what if you start from scratch, averaging two fifty three hundred hours or something, I think that's fair for the grind. So in terms of the overall, you know G fifty itself, I think it's at a good spot. I think that's a good amount of time. Yes, there are people with G fifties, but they worked for it. You know. Except for like, you know, processing or some of the easier ones. But I think there is room to increase mastery caps. And instead of just raw numbers being increased, maybe add like additional perks. Like, for example, gathering. Hey, you gather something. Oh, you got a 10 second movement speed buff or something because your mastery is this point or something. You know, I would like to see them add more functional changes to your gameplay. 
that make it more fun and engaging rather than just raw numbers. Okay. What about yeah, you, Jordan? I, what do you guys think about processing? Like, uh, you know, in terms, I think processing is always like a supplementary yeah. uh, life skill. But they're all supplementary, really. Well, cook, alk, and processing are really just all sub. They're supposed to aid mm -hmm. you in the journey, right? Buffs for you, it's foods for you. Mm -hmm. how, how they can make the processing more fun rather than sitting in uh, storage for like eight hours every day and, you know, before that do its own thing. Mini games. <laughs> yeah. Before they had, uh, before they were mass processing, it actually used to be, you know, a lot better in terms of like potential to earn money. At least that's how I remember it. I'm not too sure. But, you know, they, that was something you really had to think about compared to now. It's just, oh, let's just blast levels. Because it's not really a matter of throughput and items. You get your items pretty quickly. No, processing doesn't have any uh, byproducts, Casey. All right, Jordan. Master uh, G50 or higher? Higher than G50 and higher brackets. Yes or no? Why or why not? Um... So G50, I think is fine. I do think they need to rework a lot of life skills to make it to where all of them can get to G50. Because okay. there's tons of them that like make no sense. Like Hard cooking and hunting. Sailing. Yeah, like cooking and hunting is really easy to get to G50. Uh, but like alchemy, gathering, fucking, uh, yeah, trading, sailing, like you're not going to see G50 ever, like, or rarely. Uh, Mastery, yeah. I think they should increase it. They should make an end game, uh, like I said, with the use of pen mana accessories. So there's whatever pen mana accessory plus G50 equals is how much mastery I think you should be able to reach for like an end game hardcore life skiller. Um, and there should be some sort of like bonus, whether it's just straight up mastery, more materials, or if they want to do some other benefit if they just want to do the level benefit where if you hit g50 you get some some kind of perk mm -hmm. or something um so yeah definitely room for improvement there okay okay how about you d right, so okay what do i think about this subject <laughs> uh yeah i think higher than g50 is dumb i've heard i've heard a lot of players in other streams uh not even they're not even g50 themselves they're telling uh, other people like oh yeah i should we should totally raise the caps to g100 but when are you getting to g50 i don't get it you know like <laughs> you don't have the hours but you're asking them to add more hours to the journey it doesn't make sense so you shouldn't be talking about it there's yeah. my problem and also with, uh, people like who are like uh capped out certain levels like they're like most people like caps out like g50 cooking right they're like oh my xp is going for nothing i wish it was higher no but you don't remember the struggle you took to get there you know like uh, you know you have to consider new players as well right you know so obviously you know, that's why g50 the xp is not utilized but it can be returned as like an, a, an extra income maybe you know like any xp like it, it can be maybe converted to something Rather than you know XP, yeah. It so can I, maybe give I, I don't. Like I don't want them. I something. don't want them to raise ma uh, the levels. Mm -hmm. I think raising the mastery doesn't make sense either because they literally just close the gap, right? They added mastery crystals to close the gap. They added. Um, they've removed the ten mastery from Guru Twenty One and higher to professional and artisan, right. and made it five mastery for Guru Twenty One and higher. Yep. So, I mean, based on their traje trajectory, it doesn't look like they have plans to increase the cap. And then, you know, like what would happen to the markets on top of that? Like, it's already terrible for cooking, the main marketing life skill, right? That's pr pretty much the main marketing life skill. Higher brackets, what, what, do, you, what do cooks get at 2050? Like, at 2000 cooking bracket, you're already 100% mass proc. Yeah. So I don't think they need to change the mastery. They just need to add perks for being G50. Make yeah. it so that only cooking G50s can get one-to-one -one Imperials. Nobody's going to cry. Nobody's going to bat an eye, you know, uh, have a problem with that one. Mm -hmm. 
It's incentive to get to G50, finish your journey. Once you're there, you get to reap the reward, double Imperials. Real and it's easy, good for simple. Yeah, and it's good for the market itself. Like it's not harming the market by flooding additional material. It's actually right. consuming and then each it. Each G50 cook will also then need to double their supply of Imperials, right? They can't just yeah. oh, I got my one month ready and let me market the rest. Well, they're gonna have to work twice as hard now to get that one one month ready. Right. Yeah, yeah cooking, maybe cooking just... is a little bit tricky as well. Like, I think, I don't know if they can balance it out or not, but there should be some recipes should only benefit people who are lower mastery. Like, if you are, like, high mastery, certain recipes you cook, like, it should cap out how much money you can make per hour. Like, you know, like, some of the sub meals. And so, like, let's say some of the sub meals caps out, like, let's say, 300 million per hour, right? And as a beginner player... Uh, with low mastery, you can cook those meals and sell it to the market for 300 million per hour. That's a good money for you. But someone who has 2K mastery, and it may not be so good money. So they might be able to buy those sub meals and then use those sub meals to make maybe like a meal that's going to give them 600 million per hour. So rather than, you know, forcing every 2K player to, you know, go make all those sub meals and, you know, an hour they make like 100 million, 150 or 200 million wasting their time. Uh, they should bump up those profits a little bit and, uh, you know, let the, you know, lower mastery players to make those meals and they can, you know, make some decent money. And so like there should be a market in cooking for any type of mastery. It shouldn't be just like, hey, if you are 2K mastery, you make profit. If you are not, then you lose money from every single recipe. It just doesn't make sense to me. Right. Like you should be should able be... to market your work. Exactly. Yeah. Good yeah. Stuff. It could be like the, it could be like the um, like G50 only recipes or whatever. They're more silver an hour than anyone that's lower, but the lowers can create Balanos, Valencia, you know, all that stuff to level up. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing about life skilling, right? Like, you are, you're exposed to the full extent of the capabilities pretty quickly. Like for grinding, I have to be a certain grind score, I have to be at a certain or sorry, gear score and, um, you know, be in a group or something in order to do certain content. Whereas for life skilling, you know, either you're going for XP or you're going for money or a combination of both but in terms of like what you're cooking and what you're making you know it's pretty quick to touch all of the various content like you know, in terms of recipes and where you're hunting where you're gathering and stuff so it would be nice to see some variation yeah like a g like a g40 only gather spot like, exactly it would make the game so much more interesting yeah like incentivize getting those high levels you know there's, yeah. there's many ways they can go about it, but it would be nice to see something come through. I mean, yeah. And I think, uh, keeping on the subject, the longer they don't raise the levels, the more people will transition vice versa. Like, let's say I'm a life skiller. Right? I am a life skiller. <laughs> I max out all the levels I want to max out. Where else do I go in the game? Do I keep doing these life skills for money or do I possibly start the combat climb, you know? Yeah. Uh, the the longer they don't increase the caps and levels, the easier max out players will then transition to the other side, and then build up both sides of the game for hybrid gameplay. I think that's what they're they're aiming. Th they're for, hoping hope so. for. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, if they're hoping for it, they shouldn't be raising levels or masteries. Yeah. Just give us the perks. Yep. All right, I think we covered quite a few topics here. I think it's a good place to call it. What do you guys think? Uh, uh, one more thing, like, what do you guys think about yeah, tagging? Like, how can they improve the tagging to adjust Ooh. with life skill? <laughs> and also, like, the class imbalance in terms of life skills, um, even though it's, like, very minor. Like, for example, you know, we hunting, have to create yeah. striker to get extra bonus for hunting. Or Mystic. And then, or Mystic, yeah. yeah. And and then you have to buy extra weights and inventory slot for that as well. And on the other hand, like, for example, you know, we do, like, questing, and we get, like, a bunch of quest items 
I, I believe we should have like an extra inventory for quest items rather than using uh, our main inventory. And, you know, similar to like Pearl inventory, it should be a like family inventory and plus quest inventory. So all the quest items shouldn't cost any weight and it should just go there. So hmm. it doesn't, you know... Uh, Which quest items are you talking about that are... Actual inventory. That you're talking about? Uh, I mean, like, for example, like this, there's a water bottle. I have Miraculous Water of Life and it's a quest item bound to character. Or uh, You can't put it into storage or something? I mean, you can probably put it, but then probably like Black Spirit will give you again or things like that. Or you need mm -hmm. that on you. Like this one say Elvia Nightmare Shadow. Like uh, there's a quest item like I need to do, for example. Mm -hmm. And Okay, a little yeah, bit like of quality of life there. What's yeah. this, uh, divine Portion, like it's a quest item. Like it's just keeping space. I and it's just like, you know, it might be like a few, but people who are like doing like, you know, a lot of questing, they might have like five, 10 or 20 different quest items sitting on their inventory. Because maybe they are like halfway through like a quest chain or something, you know, you need that item to progress to next level. You know, you need to combine like five of these items to go to, you know, mm -hmm. to, to the next level or next quest or things like that. You know, just separate inventory. Because most games does quest inventory. Rather yeah, than, they do. And... And also maybe like uh, different tabs for inventory. Right now they have like, you know, categories. But mm -hmm. maybe if we can create our own category, like, you know, and we Test. can just, you know, put all like cooking stuff in one or, you know, some other stuff in the other one. Yeah. Rather than all is just like in one. Let us free move items. I, I want to see two systems. My bad. There's a little Go bit ahead. off topic from what he's saying. I want to see a sniper world boss in the game, <laughs> right? Where a bunch of people can group up and snipe a single boss together. Uh, I also want to see more customization to the workers. I want to be able to progress my worker empire individually, worker by worker. I want to boost their stats where applicable by working for it, whatever way they deem necessary, right? Like if I need to go gather materials to make my worker work speed higher, I'll do that. I want to see more progression in um, the worker system itself. Yeah. We, we can have sniper PvP minigame. <laughs> sniper hunting. <laughs> Imagine I don't going know. to RBF with sniper rifle, and then if you are good with reloading, you know, you'll do more damage, you can do headshots and stuff. <laughs> I'd like to see uh, where your life skill gear or life skill uh, like costumes can be exchanged with characters without having to like buy multiple costumes. What money? Same thing with like same thing with weight and even if uh, it's a hundred mil item sync from a blacksmith in the game, I would do it. Yeah, know? yeah. It's similar to tagging, I guess. You know, we have to. You know, yeah. And to your point, but Russ, we don't about want tagging. Say life skill character to be in the same spot though. Like so tagging exactly wouldn't work. Because you know, if you're hunting in new region and then cooking in idle, it just wouldn't work. Tagging wouldn't work. Yeah, and uh on the point of tagging, um when are they lifting the restriction from trading and turning in Imperials on attack character? They did they, they it's already fixed. You can you can already turn in trade trade uh trade sure. Imperials? When? Yeah, you can turn in Imperials. You just can't take out old boxes from your storage. You can make them fresh at the... Oh, point. okay. That, so I have to make new Imperial boxes and then I can turn those in? R right, yep. Gotcha. Make, yeah. you... And you have to make the exact quantity. It's very annoying. <laughs> yeah, because then you can't put them back in storage either, right? So you have to watch how much you're making. Oh, shit. Yeah, to... <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, you have to go <gasps> buy Russ's Go buy Russ's uh, balanced meals. <laughs> oh man, are they mid price? Twenty one k. Oh, I don't have any. <laughs> I don't have any left. <laughs> I only buy min price goods. That's how I get rich in video. <laughs> yes. No, I don't. I don't. I don't sell min price. I like there's this price. item, uh, Trace of Despair. You know, one day they're gonna make that an alchemy elixir. Might as well stock up on it. <laughs> fruit of destruction, fruit of perfection. One day they're going to make oils out of that. Might as well stock up on it. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> oh. Helping out Jordan's one million stash there. <laughs>
Uh, all right, guys. How about we call it here? Any question? Any last yeah. questions? Any uh, questions in chat? Uh, Casey, so Casey basically, yeah. Full... yeah, Casey's basically yeah, saying how some life skills don't uh, compare to other life skills in money, even fully maxed out. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm personally as as, okay with that. As long as they have their own place, like, there's a reason for them being there and for us to go and participate in it. Because uh, at the end of the day, a lot of them tie together, and that is, I think, is an important part of life skilling. I don't want someone to just purely be hunting and then expect for max amount of cash. You are hunting? Okay, are you going to also process cook alchemy? Then you should get the full potential. But if you just want to hunt and sell, you know, I can see it being worthless. I'd like everything to tie in together some way. Not in the everything, but in some aspects. Yeah, I think as there, long there as there are they... a lot of polishing. There are a lot of polishing this game needs to do. Like, have hmm. you guys noticed like some of the rewards? For example, like farming turnings, right? Uh, one item gives like you know horse upgrade material is like two point five million, and the other one is like yeah, it's uh, trash fertilizer, like ten k. <laughs> like how? Why? It's or for one Iron seed, Man, which is like ten k again, like. Jordan, like you're saying something. Go for the fertilizer, right? <laughs> yeah, the, um, he's basically. I think what you're trying to say is that the the choices are poor. There's like, yeah. it looks like there's a lot of choices, but they're poor choices. So there's really only one or two good choices. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. now I was gonna say like all the prices of life skilling should be roughly around the same, no matter what one you pick, because you want people to do er like everything. You don't want people just like two years ago or whatever. Everyone just cooked. Right, you don't want everyone cooking, no one doing alchemy, and now it's like the direct opposite, where everything else is like getting better, but now cooking's just trash compared to everything else. So you want, but you want everything to be good. So then it gives players a variety of like what life skill route they want to go, etc., and they can still stay competitive with everything. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's like my opinion of uh, the life skilling. All right. Good stuff. All right. Good stuff, man. I think uh, we covered. I feel satisfied. Yeah. <laughs> I, feel satisfied. I think we had a solid discussion here. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think it's time to start planning for the next one. Yeah. So we can do. Yeah, we will. I was yeah, gonna we can say discuss we can... some topics and then maybe next week or the week after. Like, uh, depends on how, what contents. Yeah. We'll yeah, I was gonna say what well, we could we could do like Wednesdays or whatever whenever <laughs> they come out with the uh, C notes. Yeah. Because they normally come come out with them around uh, Tuesday, right? This Tuesday time. Night. I like I like uh, whatever it doesn't matter for me. Yeah. Days. Well, who are on? We can hop uh, on. I will. I will be at work because right now it's like daytime. Work yeah. Hours. So if it's not weekend, you know, like right now, 3 p.m. So like when it was 11 p.m. when we started, it was 1 p.m. for like yeah. 1 p.m. for me. Yeah. Right. And so it's like, a you know, work hours for me. So how about we Friday, meet up uh, to Saturday? Yeah. This time is usually good. Uh, we, we tried. I think we we tried me and you tried on Sunday, but that's uh, conflict with the Node Wars. Yeah. So people usually tend to go to Node Wars or. Right. You know, or watch not work so i think this this time is good okay and uh jordan how about we and jordan starts stream at this time anyway <laughs> or yeah i was saying uh you know if uh d if you're available as well um we can just meet up on jordan's stream on wednesday and uh yeah i'll be there late like 10 11 i'll be there yeah, same yeah. time as now yeah yeah that works yeah we could just give like our opinions of like the patch note or yep. whatever sounds good Patch no good. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> patch no bad. It isn't isn't patch no no wait a minute. It's not daytime. So you mean like after maintenance? Um the C ones come co comes during night for us. And then the next morning we get the NA notes and the NA patch. So uh we can go okay, over so it the, the night before. Usually go down for me at uh six PM. Like I finish work at five PM and server goes down. Uh, at 6 p.m. 
So if it's like after service goes down, no, 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 as well. We, not not during the NA one because that's like early morning for us or early in our definition, <laughs> DGen definition. But um, yeah, the C ones are we come out like eight to twelve hours before NA does. So that's what he is referring to. Oh, C, you mean C server? Okay. Yeah, so and we usually get the daytime, same shit like around this time. You mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, uh, but that time usually uh, end live streams as well for the patch notes. Mm. And there's a bunch of streamers stream the same thing. That's fine. All right. Outros. Outros. Yeah. Who wants All to right. close us off? All right. Where can we? Uh, I'll just ask. Where can we uh, find you, Pansy? <laughs> at youtubecom slash I'm Pansy or at I'm Pansy. I will put up, uh, I'll break this uh, podcast into multiple sections depending on topic, and I'll drop videos accordingly. And uh, I'll be sure to put links for everyone else's uh, channels there. Um, D, do you have a YouTube? No. Okay. Just making sure. I'll make sure all the links are there, and we'll. you'll be able, if anyone's missed anything here, you can find it there. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll let Pansy come up with an outro during editing. Um, I don't know. I'll need I'll need clips from everyone, some pog clips that I can throw together. But we'll figure it out. Is is any of you gonna stream like Jordan D? I can give you gear crafting clips in this game. Yeah, plenty yeah. of those. <laughs> That'll work. Um, I ended my stream when uh, we started this. I'm not sure yeah, if Jordan's gonna here. keep going. All right. I guess I'll keep the stream. I mean, unless. Yeah. Everyone wants to keep going. Uh, stream. I can't send everyone to him, but otherwise, we might do perfect sniper hunting. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, this is really fun. I loved. I loved it. It was awesome. Yeah. Talking. Well, we'll start planning the next one. Uh, All right. By the way, guys, as you guys noticed, we created the Masterminds team on uh, Twitch as well. So you can you will see the team link uh, under my name. I can probably share the. Uh, let me find the link as well. Good stuff. Uh, in the meantime, let me end my recording here. Everybody, thanks for watching. Uh, if you're watching this in the future on uh, YouTube or on the Twitch wad, uh, it was definitely fun to do, and we're gonna keep going and come out with more content for you guys. So appreciate yeah, all of you. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate yep. it. And thanks to D Jordan Russ. Pleasure She's working with you. money. <laughs> yep. Yes, sir. All, All right. right. I guess we can just chill and talk if you guys want.